And that uh, moves on to blue. And our first blue card here is back to the commons. Birthday escape. Single blue mana for a sorcery. Draw a card. The ring tempts you. This card just looks good. Like it's yeah. it's triggering your your draw too. It's getting a level up. Like even if you play this on turn one without a ring bearer, just making sure that your next tempting is is going to have the looting ability. Like I think this card's just just a solid card. Yeah, it does. It, it's the it, the glue in the right way. We were talking about those artifacts are kind of gluey in the wrong ways, but it's super cheap. It draws a card for those. Like you said, it also you know puts spells in the graveyard for your blue red deck. Um, and yep. that, that's actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you about this card. Um, I, I heard some conversation about, oh, you're not going to want to cast this on turn one. Um, but I, my gut when I read this was, I think you are just going to cast it on turn one. Like you, you don't mind. Oh yeah. Yeah, you don't mind giving up that you know ring bearer equip, quote unquote, right? Like it's going to come eventually. You're going to equip it to something, or you're sorry, the ring is going to trigger. You're going to choose a ring bearer. Um, yes, you do give that up, quote unquote, if you cast on turn one. But just getting this out of your hand, cycling, getting in your grave. Getting, making it so that the second time you're tempted by the ring, you do get to that actual great ability of getting to loot. So, yeah, I, I think this is a good role player C. Yeah, like, I don't think... If you, like, wait until you've cast your first creature before you play this, yeah, giving your first creature Skulk isn't going to matter a lot of the time. Mm, yeah. So, like, but giving your creature Skulk plus loot is... So, I, like, I, I think almost all the time you're just supposed to cast this on turn one unless you really specifically have like some kind of synergy where drawing the second card like if you have the blue white uncommon in your hand where draw the second card and make a token don't play this on turn one right, right? like that that's <laughs> out here but a lot of other cases i think most of the time you're going to be able to to be happy playing this on turn one cool yeah you want to join me on c for birthday escape see I, i'm gonna go c plus okay cool yeah i'll say it's c but uh yeah i think we're Kind of in the same range here. Another one mana cantrip up next, uh, or not quite a cantrip, a cheap spell. Deceiver, or sorry, de deceive the messenger. Single blue mana. I can't even say the normal words now. <laughs> Single blue mana for an instant. Target creature gets negative three, negative O until end of turn. Amass orcs one. Yeah, this is like this has the potential to be pretty good. Like you can just eat something if you don't have any token out this is just an instant speed one one that gives something minus three minus so oh. but we've seen i guess we've brian bear and pewter type cards are usually not very good I, i'm having a tough i think this card's not great but i don't think it's unplayable well i would actually say so brian barrow we, we i think there was a few sets that you missed that had those kind of effects that actually were pretty good and brian bear intruder it's the call time one right that that one was a an exception that one wasn't very good um, but the, we had a one mana one in Zendikar Rising. That was one of the better blue commons. We also had like a, you know, flying version back in Ravnica Allegiance, but being flying definitely matters. So I, I think that, um, it, you're right. It's kind of hard to decipher the baseline of how good these negative X, negative O, make it treacher, uh, cards are. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. But I think being one mana is great. And I think being a spell that you can just cycle and not, you know, you have to, it's not just like cycle at any time, but it, again, it is a spell that gets in the graveyard Sometimes you even, like, in the mid-game, you line up your uh, army, and it grows by one, and you're going to win that combat. So I think this card is, is just pretty good. You can even uh, give your own creature minus three to block a ring bearer. <laughs> exactly, yeah, that's synergy, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give this one a C as well, um, I think. I wrote it on C as well, okay. so, okay. I wasn't that far off of you, but, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah. C for Deceive the Messenger. Got right that time. <laughs> All right, what do we have next? Next, we have Bewitching Leechcraft. One in a blue for an aura, enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature has, if this creature would untap during your untap step, remove a plus one plus one counter from it instead. If you do, untap it. So they've kind of gone, all right, we, we, we realized the three mana, one blue blue version of this effect is, has continuously underperformed. I think this is effectively just a two mana version of that effect. Like, yes, it's it's got the if it's got a counter, you instead untap it. But there's not a ton of like there's not just counters flying around in this set. Um, and just two mana lock something down, take it out of the equation, combat wise. Like that's that's a decent rate. Well, so just like the white one that changed the creature type, the the the, the text on this is basically a cute way of saying we're not going to let you lock down right. the army. Yep. And that's that's why the plus one counter text yeah, is there. Great point. Um, but yeah, this thing, it's getting closer to being something <laughs> I'm interested in. Yeah, I guess still not that excited about it. So there was um, 
Did did you play Omnicat Remastered at all? No. Okay, so there was Unquenchable Thirst, which was a you know two, th this basically two mana version, and if you control the desert, it like it like the thing didn't untap, and then if you control the desert, um, it also tapped it when it entered, or maybe it was vice versa. But that was actually a really really good common, like one of the top commons in the set. So I I do think that making this not as much as you can talk down or a base and uh, removal, I think in this set with not his great removal and being two mana and not being double blue, I think that brings this up to like a C plus. Well, I mean, there's there's still like wings of the cosmos in this set. That's true. Yeah, that is true. There's like a flick, there's a flicker in this set. Okay. Like there's. Yeah, yeah. I I could see it being being worse than I'm expecting too, but I I kept reading this card and was like I I I just have a feeling this one's gonna be you know quite a bit better than the versions we see of this usually. So I'm gonna say. Yeah, I wrote down C plus. I wrote down C minus. Okay. What, you were gonna give it a C plus. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a C plus. Okay. Uh oh, this is a funny one. Glorious Gale is up next. I didn't expect them to print a strictly better essence scatter, but here we are. One in a blue for an instant. Counter target creature spell, and if that uh spell was legendary, the ring tempts you. Yeah, this card just looks great. Yeah. <laughs> essence scatter is just good, right? Like it's, it's just a good card. Is this I think this is like a B minus? Yeah, I I would I was gonna just give it a B, actually, honestly. Like it, it probably i think there is like spell based decks that are just happy to leave up their mana and even in decks that are capping out a little more often like you're gonna find a spot for this you're like okay well i'll play my creature here leave up to counter their four drop or something like i think one of the things with essence scatter variants and they're often quite underrated i remember back, even back in dominaria united people caught on as the format went on but it was a quite an underrated a common for a long time i think people kind of think oh i have to always be keeping up mana i have to be a controlling deck Sometimes, yeah, it's probably better there, but it's not that much worse in a, in a deck that uh, you aren't just always keeping up mana because two mana is just not that hard to keep up for the tempo this gives you. So I, I'm just going to go B, honestly, on Glorious Gale, but I, I could see being a little bit uh, lower on it as, as the format goes on. Maybe maybe you are forced to tap out a little more often than I'm expecting. Well, not only just the tap out, but there's like a bunch of... We talked about this. You're talking about true. the spells that... You're right. Like, no, 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 that's true. There's, there's like a lot of spells that make amass tokens that this will not hit right yeah yeah you know what that's true all right all right you talked me up i'm gonna go i'll go, I'll go b minus then <laughs> okay yeah what are, what are you doing for this one yeah i, I said b minus okay cool b minus for glorious scale uh what's up next if lane knots one and a blue for an instant tap target creature scry one draw a card yeah it's another kind of gluey card right you draw a second card you scry uh, maybe you tap them in a ring bearer, right? That's a pretty important thing that you can actually tap down and um, get a little bit of value there. And overall, it's not that impactful, but I, I think, you know, your uh, spells matters. The, you know, the, all these little things add up to, once again, this probably being a little bit worse than the other ones we've seen because two mana versus one mana. Um, but I would probably give Hithlane not to C-. minus. Yeah, I think I, that sounds about right. You're going to be, like, the more instants you have, the more you're fine playing a card like this. Because it's just a way to spend your mana when you leave it open. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, next up, we've got Nimrodil... Nimrodil? <laughs> These names, man. I should I should have had a pronunciation guy before we did this. <laughs> Nimrodil Watcher. One in a blue for a 2-1. Elf Scout. Whenever you scry, Nimrodil Watcher gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. This ability triggers only once per turn. Yeah, so I talked about there being like a cycle of two ones for two in, in each color mm -hmm. that I kind of liked. And this is this is the blue one. And this is m maybe one of the best ones because just like being able to hit for three every once in a while that they can't do anything about is pretty nice. Yeah, and there. so I was I was kind of going through uh, uh, Archetype Skeleton for blue-green. And the thing I like about this card, sometimes we've seen versions of this effect where it's like when you cast a spell, you, 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 it gets plus one, plus one unblockable. Um, we've seen versions of this before, but there's a, a lot of natural curves where you're just playing creatures on curve and your three drop scries and your four drop scries where I think this is going to be three one unblockable a good amount of the time in the right deck. Like you have to be in the in, in the scry deck, of course. And even still, sometimes you're just going to play as, as a two in, in a deck that has like five scry cards. And, you know, sometimes you just you need a two and it'll get in. But I, I do think this is a pretty solid one. What do you want to give it? I'm just going to give it a C. I think, I think it's just going to yeah. be fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up we have... <laughs> Peller Greer Survivor, one in a blue for a 1 3 human. Tap, add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast instant or sorcery spells. It's also got the ability five in a blue tap, target player mills three cards. 
Yeah, this thing looks looks better than other versions. Of, like, we've seen 1-3s that tap for blue that only can be spent on instants and sorceries, and usually those cards are pretty bad. I think this thing might have a home, but I'm still... Like, I'm thinking C- minus on this still. Yeah, I, I think might have a home, but I'm skeptical is, is kind of what I'm thinking. Like, I was going to go D+. Plus. I think anytime we've seen this effect, it's... It's not even underperformed. It's, like, woefully underperformed. Like, you're like, oh, it might be good in the deck that it belongs in. And then you're like, oh, no, it's just actually terrible. And 1-3 is definitely, like, usually you see this on, like, 2-1s or 1-1s. And 1-3 is better. Uh, you know, ring bearer. Adding one man of any color is interesting. What do you make of that six-mana ability? It's just like, well, I got to end the game somehow. Well, yeah, like, it's just... it. If your spells deck is just countering things and drawing cards and not doing anything, like... Yeah. You're eventually gonna have turns where your opponent doesn't cast anything and you don't have anything to counter, and this just gives you a way to spend mana. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I still am gonna start with a D plus. I I agree it is better than the versions we see, but yeah, it's yeah it's gonna have to prove itself. I think. Uh, what's up next? Next we have Soothing of Smeagol. One and a blue for an instant. Return target non-token creature to its owner's hand. The ring tempts you. Ooh. I like this. Uh, it's I'm not broken is obviously on purpose, but unfortunate. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the I think most bounce spells we've seen with a little bit of upside recently have just been pretty good as long as they're one or two mana, um, or you know three or four, and then they draw a card. It's interesting too, actually, because it's not that this matters too too much, but ring tempting you at instant speed. Like if you have been tempting quite a bit, it's like three damage out of nowhere sometimes. Um, just, you know, a little modality to the card. Don't think it's going to come up that often. Uh, but I generally just like a copy of the bounce spell with a little bit of upside in most of my decks. So I would probably just give Soothing of Smeagol a C. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go C minus. Okay, yeah, that's, that's respectable. I, I can see it being there too. Yeah. Next up, Captain of Umbar. Two and a blue for a two, three human pirate. One, tap, draw a card, discard a card uh d yeah like d d minus like the thing about looting um i i think an interesting way to kind of look at it is it's kind of like life gain where it's good if it's incidental you know if it's on a spell or it's free with something like you know rona we had in the last set you don't have to pay mana but when you're putting a card in your deck just to loot uh it, it's not so good <laughs> right it's good it's good when you can just do it here and there but here's the thing, this card's going to be even worse in this set than it would normally, because we have a looting outlet. <laughs> just, it just baked yeah. into the set mechanic. So, yeah, I, I just don't think you're going to ever play this card. Really. I, I might even just go D- or F. Okay, yeah, yep. yeah I'm, D- sounds fine to me. All right, next up. Next we have Dreadful as the Storm. Two and a blue for an instant. Target creature has base power and toughness 5-5 five, five until end of turn. The ring tempts you. So much worse than draw a card, but is it good enough to be playable? Yes, this is interesting, right? Because all the ones that do this and draw a card have been good, and all the ones that do this and don't draw a card have been bad. Yeah. Pretty much, I right? So. And this is kind of like right in between. Um, but this is potentially a lot of damage on an amass token, right? It's like an extra five damage. Yep. And if you're targeting, if, like if you're casting this pre-combat and making a, well, I guess if you make a ring bear, it'll be able to be blocked but you could do it after attacking, but then you don't get the loot trigger. So, that, yeah, so there's a lot of weird timing things with this. Yeah, the, the ring is really interesting the way they've costed it because I think sometimes they just kind of spot it to you for free. You're like, oh, I didn't expect it. Like, you know, we saw the Essence Scatter with the... It's like, oh, I mean, obviously, you know, it's only Wind Legends, but you, there's been some examples just like, oh, they just kind of give it to you. And sometimes it's like they make you pay additional mana or sometimes, they like this card, they've replaced an effect we usually see, like draw a card with Tempt. I think they were kind of unsure how to cost it, to be honest. And, and from what I heard from development, they went through a lot of iterations to get the ring right. And, you know, depending on who you ask, they, they still didn't really get it right because it doesn't have that flavorful downside. I, I would bet that tempting you is nowhere close to drawing a card in how you'd expect it to play out. And like you said, the versions that haven't drawn you a card have not been very good. So I'm going to give this a D. A D? Yep. Uh, D, 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 D. Okay, I'll, I'll go D+. Plus. Yeah, I, I can see, like, you know, I, I like your points of it, like, just doming them out of nowhere for, uh, with the amass crew tokens, or, again, you know, the instant speed thing, like I was mentioning, on block creature, make it a 5-5, five, five, maybe then deal you three because you get that last ability on the ring, but, yeah, I think that's more corner casey than anything. 
Next up, okay. Gray Haven's Navigator, two and a blue for a three-two flash elf pilot. Again, elf is sometimes relevant. Whenever uh, when Gray Haven's Navigator enters the battlefield, you scry one. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. Like your uh, Chrome Cat with flash. Yeah, Chrome Cat with flash. I I, I was a, I'm a Chrome Cat apologist. I I, I kind of like that card, and this has synergies in the set. Flash is kind of nice. You know, flash creatures play well with instants. Sometimes you're going to be able to activate a. You know, we've seen the. Uh, uh, Elon was the the blue green uncommon that grows when you scry. Sometimes uses as a combat trick. There's other cards that do the same thing, grows when you scry. So yeah, I don't think this is an amazing card. I think I just give it like a C minus, D plus maybe. But it's it's gonna be a, a playable in your decks that care about scrying. Yeah, I have uh, I have it as C minus. Cool. Yeah, C minus is good. All right, next up. Next we have Elithian Kingfisher, two and a blue for a two one bird. It has flying, and when it dies, you can draw a card. I actually think, Mark, I think it's Ethelian. <laughs> oh, you're right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, no. <laughs> first one, baby, first one. So, uh, you know, Inspiring Overseer, Cloud Conseer, this is not, right? This is very different from that card. Death, much different than Enter the New Battlefield. But I still kind of like it. Like, you're happy to block with this. You're happy to attack with it sometimes. I don't know, I think it's an okay card. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the four mana one we saw in DMU, mm. where it looked at two and you got to keep one of them. Yep, Talus Lookout. Talus Lookout, yeah, which which is a card I was usually pretty happy to play. It's just a card that your opponents don't want to attack into, ever. Exactly, yeah. So, it's probably okay. I, I, I would say it's probably just like a C. Yeah, yeah, C sounds pretty reasonable for this. One of the things that we haven't really gotten to or mentioned is that, you know, we've been talking about how the ring gives you some evasion, but the ring's also just pretty good on creatures that are naturally evasive. Like, the evasion the ring grants you is like, oh, it's a little bit finicky, you have to maybe work around some stuff here and there, but if you just put, if this just makes the Kingfisher uh, your ring bearer, like, it's just going to keep getting in and start and looting. So, yeah, I, I think this card's, you know, got some, got some merit, and I think a solid C. Yeah, I, I think w one thing we haven't mentioned, so... I wanted to give this a higher grade, mm. but there's actually quite a bit of reasons against uh, X ones in this format, especially like more expensive ones, because the more you're paying for it, the more you don't want to just lose a card to this. Definitely. There's, there's a, we saw the, there's the 1-1 one, one flyers in black-white, but there's also a bunch of things that deal one damage to everything. So I do think this card's pretty good, but it, it's going to suffer contextually in this set because there's a lot of things that are going to kill it pretty much for free. Yeah, that does suck. So do you do you want to go lower on it maybe or just say it yourself? No, no, I'm, I'm still putting it a C because as I said, like I think it's a, it, if this card dies to an incidental card, yeah, you've gotten an incidental card, right? right? You kind of like made up for the free value they've got with free value on your side. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too upset if that happens, but it, it's worth noting. I don't think this thing's just going to come in and start like, Pinging people to death easily. Yeah, totally. Next up, we've got Treason of Elsingard. Uh, two and a blue. Isengard. Isengard. Ah, Isengard. I, I didn't think you just did. Oh, man. Ah, I, I, I want my negative one point to Alex. <laughs> it's a yeah. two and a blue for a sorcery. Put up to one target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. Amass two orcs. Yeah, it's a Halo Charge Scab at home. Yeah, it's a little, it's a, it's a baby Halo Charge Scab. <laughs> yeah. So the thing, you know, we, we gave Halo Charge Scab like a D minus, maybe even F in the last set of reviewed. And it actually ended up being a card that you would play sometimes, mostly in a combo with uh, Breach the Multiverse. But sometimes if you just had really good spells and there were really good removal spells in the last set, you'd be like, okay, this is a fine 23rd playable. Right? Maybe yeah, it's going to make the cut. Uh, I think that the removal in this set is not good enough to consistently think this card, you know, I think, I think there are going to be spots, you know, we looked at that blue, red uncommon that were like, oh, you could just like, you know, buy that back, deal your, that the one toughness creature, a bunch of damage, five to your opponent's face. I could see spots where this card makes your deck just like Halo Charge Scob, but it's not good in the abstract. Yeah, I was thinking like a D for this. Yeah, uh, I was I was even gonna go D minus with just the caveat that sometimes it's gonna have a spot. Well, yeah, I do think like the blue red uh, Gandalf sanction deck is is gonna be common enough that mm -hmm. like this will see play in in that deck some amount of the time. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, yep. Uh, next up we have Arwen's Gift. This is three and a blue for a sorcery. This spell costs one less to cast if you control two or more legendary creatures. Scry two, then draw two cards. I yeah, I, I don't like this. Mm, yeah, four mana generally going to be four mana. Even if it's three mana, scry two, draw two. It's not like 
that exciting, right? Right. Like we're a long way past divination being a, a good card. Yep. Uh, can I just give it a D? Yep. I want to give this a D. Cool. Ooh, this one though. What's next? Isolation at Orthanc. Three and a blue for an instant. Put target creature into its owner's library. Second from the top. Yes, please. Yes, yes. This card is so cool. So, uh, I again gonna give my spiel of remember, just because you don't get rid of it for good, that's okay. It still doesn't make it a bad removal spell. I imagine this card is gonna go later than it should because a lot of people, a lot of drafters, do see it that way. But this card is even kind of better than the, some of the versions we've seen recently. So last year in Streets of New Capenna, we saw Run Out of Town, which was this card. But they got the option to put it on the top or the bottom of their, their library, right? And we saw in the last set, Temporal Cleansing, same thing. They get the option to put it on the top or the bottom. And that's so that, uh, you know, if you, you, they're not forced to redraw a really crappy creature. They don't get the option with this one. If you if you top a, a three drop that's not very relevant, they have to redraw it in two turns. And that is such, you're digging for something you need. That is the worst feeling. And just, you know, instant speed, four mana, get rid of a thing. Uh, it gets rid of armies. But, like, it doesn't say non-token. I think this card is really quite good. Yeah, th yeah, this card is, I think it's just, like, this one, and there's there's a red one, but it might be the best common in, in the set. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I love how, uh, you know, last time we had, you had your uh, your soapbox about Afar's dispersal and how much you love that in the set review. And I honestly, you were the only person who I really heard talk it up and like, I was high on the card, but not as high as you. And that card just ended up being fantastic. Do you want to give a hot take on this? Do you think this is like, you know, top something common in the set? Put it as a B. Yeah, I'll see. Uh, yeah, I like B. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, <laughs> Knights of Dole Amroth. This is... Three and a blue for a three three human knight. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on knights of Dol Amroth. Yeah, we've seen this again. Like whatever Latinam thing it was, mm -hmm. wasn't very good. This is one of those cases where a three three for four just doesn't have enough upside to like. This is with the ring bear looting again. Like you can see spots where it's a little bit better, but I just. I have this as like a D plus probably. Yeah, I think there's this small little modifier of you're going to be this is going to be a four four to the turn it comes down. Some of the time blocks is a four four because you get that free loot from your ring bearers. But a lot of the time you're actually not going to have that second trap, uh, second ability on the ring bearer just yet on turn four. So, yeah, I, I think it's still just not going to be good. I, I'm just going to give this a D minus. Yeah, like the, the, the heart, the way to get this. To loot on turn four, like you have to have twice had the ring tempted and have a creature to like become your ring bearer and that, that creature has to be able to attack there mm -hmm. so you're, you're you're probably just right about I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go down to a d on this cool uh next up we've got surrounded by orcs three and a blue for a sorcery a mass orcs three then target player mills x cards where x is the amassed army's power hmm interesting yeah so you like between the two drop that makes mana that mills and then into like this on turn three and then into like the thing that tops something y you can see the outlines of a mill deck but it's it's not really like it, it's more of one of those things that i think people can picture going right and then when you play it it's like oh actually i tried to do this but i just got run over i yeah you know what i think it's gonna be like in uh in mom we had all those cards that incidentally milled both players and you were just fine casting a lot of those cards, Unsealed Necropolis, you know, just like to, you know, go on the other list, uh, you know, Amonkhet, of course, Invasion of Amonkhet. And sometimes you're like, oh, my game plan is actually, this game is going to be milling them out because we're actually just at that point of the game. The problem here, though, is a lot of the cards that instantly mill both players aren't just good cards like they were in the last set. You're, you're not just like, oh, I'm putting these in my deck and sometimes we mill, them, we mill the opponent out. Here it's like, yeah. you, you kind of have to have that plan going in. So... This card does not excite me. Uh, and, you know, th th maybe there's some weird deck that that is the mill deck happens to for whatever contextual reason happens to be a little bit better than we're assuming here. But I think I'm just gonna give this one like a D. Yeah, I was I went down to D minus on this. Cool. All right, what's up next? Next we have Lorian revealed three blue blue for a sorcery. Draw three cards and island cycling one. Hmm. Okay, so you know, I, I like this card because it has Island Cycling One. <laughs> I like can't like a spell that you can get in your graveyard. Uh, cares for your cards to care about that. I think just like we passed the time of divination 
we've also kind of passed the time of three mana i'm oh, sorry five mana draw three three is a lot more than two for what it's worth but there's just so few games that you can on turn five cast this or even later in the game get to a point like turn seven well that's just hard to do sometimes anyways and get to the point where you cast this and you know you don't feel like you're dying so i, I think this card does gain a lot by having cycling on it like that that is not you know i was joking about like oh get into the graveyard for your like blue red spells deck but that really does make your draw spell a way lower opportunity cost so it's better than some of the other five mana draw threes we've seen it's still not a card that excites me that much yeah like it, it does get a spell into your graveyard for for the gandalf switch or exactly, or whatever yeah. but i'm still i wanted to give it like a c minus yeah, I, I was going to go even D+, plus, but yeah, you know, I'll join it C-. Okay. I think it's got a lot enough little stuff going on. Uh, okay. Willow Wind, four and a blue for a 3-4 flyer. It's an elemental. When Willow Wind enters the battlefield, you scry two. Yeah, I don't mind this thing. Like, scry two on a five drop is almost like drawing a card. Yeah. Because, like, if you're putting lands on the bottom at that point, you don't really need them, so... This, I don't think this thing's bad. No, we've, we've, every time we've seen this card, and it's been a while, to be fair, it's been, you know, before, uh, I think, Modern Limited really kicked into high gear. It was a pretty good common. We saw it in uh, Guilds of Ravnica and in original Dominaria. And Magic's changed a little bit since then, but I don't think it's a D or anything. I think that those are some of the better commons in their set. I, I would give this a C, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what I was going to go to. C for Willowind. Uh, okay, that brings us to Uncommons, and we got a cool one here. Stern Scolding. Every time I say a cool one, it really just means I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Stern Scolding is a single blue mana for an instant and uncommon. Counter target creature spell with power or toughness two or less. Yeah, this is going to be really good on the draw. Yeah, yeah. It's talking about cards that are good on the draw. This is this is one of them. Yeah, I think, and but I think like, I think I'm going to play the first copy of this most of the time. Yeah, this hits every, I, I'm, I believe every three drop and below at common. And most of the uncommon ones as well. And probably a lot of the rares. So you're going to be trading up on mana substantially a good amount of the time. I would kind of see it as like different cut down in some ways. Or different shock, you know. Where, yeah, it's a little more uh, timing specific. But the range of things you can kill or, you know, get get rid of are is, uh, is a little bit higher, I would say. Like sometimes you're just going to counter a four drop creature and you're going to feel fantastic about it, right? So I, I do think this one's pretty good. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, the Sirkovitz breakdown for how much this hits yet, but my, my inkling is that it's quite a bit. And then the other nice thing about a card like this and a set like this is that later on, you can probably just loot it away. Uh, we got Chats has uh, the, the scoop here. Hits 70% of the commons and about 70% of the format. That's, that's, that's yeah, <laughs> I'm happy to play. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Yeah, th this is like, I, I think, and maybe again, another, maybe another hot tank, but I think this is a B. A B. Ooh, ooh. It's one mana, man. <laughs> what did you want to do? You want to get like a, a C plus? Uh, yeah, I was leaning there, but you've you've talked you've talked me up to a, to a B minus. Yeah, and for what it's worth, your your point again about some of the creatures are just spells, and you're like, oh crap, you know, I can't actually count to that. But I, I just think there's gonna be enough times where you're just happy to cast this and it's so good on the draw and yeah, I, I I'm I'm in love with this card. <laughs> like you do have you have to leave it open for the first few turns. Yeah. So you can't serve out. Yeah, you can't play sure. a two drop. Yeah. I, I think it's okay. I, I think one mana is just easy enough to hold up most of the time. Um what's next? Next we have Bill Fernie Bree Swindler. And this is one where I don't remember this character. I don't understand why it has that last ability. <laughs> we'll get there in a second. One and a blue for a 2-1 legendary human rogue. Whenever it becomes blocked, choose one. Either create a treasure or target opponent gains control of target horse you control. <laughs> if they do, remove Bill Fernie from combat and create three treasure tokens. Well, we're never giving our opponent our precious Bill the horse. We can't do that. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I want to get rid of. Like I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, it's I, it's a flavor thing, basically. For any flavor that we don't, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're basically looking at this as two mana, two one. When it gets blocked, create a treasure token. Yeah. Yeah, and that is huh. not that great. Yeah, not that great. 
I'm, I'm comparing it. I know it's not a perfect comparison. I'm, of course, I'm comparing it to Magda, the two mana red creature from Call of Time. That whenever it's had. Oh, it is not. Oh anywhere no 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 no! Close. I know I know. I'm just I'm just using that as like for some context here, and it's much worse than that. Because if you're gonna have it attack and they block, well, it's gonna trade. Yeah, I I mean, it's, it's not the worst creature in the world. Certainly, it's not. I I don't think it's a D, but it's not great. I would probably give it like a C minus. Yeah, I'm gonna go D plus. Okay. On this. Yeah. No, no, I, I feel that too. I, I'm gonna stick with C minus, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm I'm higher on it than I should be. Next up, Council's Deliberation. One in a blue for an instant. Draw a card, and then it also says whenever you scry, if you control an island, you may exile Council's Deliberation from your graveyard. If you do, draw a card. I like this card. Yeah, it's sweet. It's it's you know a two mana draw two over some time. You have to have some scry in your deck, but it's not gonna be that hard. Yeah, yeah, I think this card's really good. Yeah, and also I think the <laughs> the if you control an island is just they do that on the on quote unquote free spells just so you can't like put this in like your red deck that scries or whatever. Um, yeah, what do you want to give this one? Um, I think I want to go. B minus on this. Yeah, that's a reason, and that sounds—I know that might sound high to some people, but I, that just two mana draw too. If you can get that, it doesn't—you don't have to get it right away, but just at some point. How many cards would you want to scry to be comfortable with this card in your deck? Yeah, so yeah, I guess so. It for it to be a B minus, you want to pretty reliably have a draw a second card, right? Like, you know that—that's that's I think implied, but something we should mention out loud. Um, you probably want at least like five as a minimum, four or five as like as the bare minimum to yeah. play this. Yeah, that sounds right. And, and and the thing is like a lot of the time, sometimes you even self mill this. That's kind of cool. And you're just like get get some free value. And the the thing about some build arounds is like, okay, well, you, if you don't meet the requirements, it's just a zero. Yeah, you it's two mana to cycle. That's not great, but it's also not like, oh man, I bricks. I have this thing stuck in my hand. So yeah, I, I like something in the B range for Council's Deliberation as well. Yeah, you're giving it a B? Yeah, let's give it a B. Okay. What's up next? Next we have Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. Two and a blue for a 3-2 legendary elf noble. When he or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, the ring tempts you. Hmm. I wonder how much better or worse this is than the common one that has flash and just scries one. Yeah. It, it looks like it should be so much better. Right, yeah, yeah, but like... How often are you gonna trade that second ability? I imagine some of that at the time. I it's you know, I don't I don't want to discount it. I, I think it's gonna come up certainly. Um, but you know, not having flash is a thing. Also being a legend is a good thing. You know, I, I don't I also don't want to overlook that. So we gave I, I think I'm probably gonna have the same grade to this as we gave the last one. It's got some pros, some cons. So I just give Elrond a C minus. C minus? Yeah. I think Elrond's a bit better than that. Okay. There's a number of things that make two creatures. But I guess not like black white is better at it than blue is. Uh, I'll just I'll just give it a C. Okay, C for Elrond. I was gonna go C plus, but I'll, I'll I'll be come come down on it a little bit, I guess. Next up is Ireth, the Healing House. Oh, sorry, Ireth of the Healing House. Two and a blue for a one four legendary creature human. It's got two abilities. First one is tap to untap another target permanent, or tap to untap two legendary creatures. Yeah, so it's kind of a mana dork. Uh, we've seen like clever conjurer type stuff like this before. That's been fine. Yep. And this being a one four is pretty nice for for blocking, like specifically ring bears, but just blocking in general. So I think this thing's not not bad. Like I, I think I'd be happy to play this. Hmm. Happy to play this is slightly higher than I. Yeah, like a C. I was gonna say. I was gonna go lower. I, I like. I think because. Clever Conjurer wasn't great, and that was like, I don't know, a D, and I'd probably give this the, the bump of the Legendary and being a 1-4 in a set that cares about that, like, to a D plus or a C. I, I think put me down for C-, minus. I think, yeah. Okay. I'm just not that excited like, about Clever Conjurer, like, Clever Conjurer was fine in blue decks. The problem was blue was so bad in that set. True, yeah, that's that's a fair point. That's definitely a fair point. Um, Next up, we've got Saruman's Trickery. One blue blue for an instant. Counter target spell. A mass orcs one. Ooh. Yeah, that's a nice upside on a counter spell. Yeah. Especially if it's, you know, it is like the thing is blue 
I think is tertiary in uh, amassing. So you're often going to yeah, get the one one rather than get a one one counter. And yeah, that punch just a mystic snake. Yeah, exactly. It's a baby mystic yeah. snake. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, I think this is like you ca counter spell three mana counter spells always right on the cusp of like give it a little bit. It's pretty good. Just have regular counter spell at three mana or cancel. I should say is like uh, whatever. I think this set's got enough instance that you're gonna be able to hold up mana enough. So yeah, I, I think C plus for Sorman's trickery. C plus. I wanted to go higher than that. Oh actually. really? Just like a B minus maybe. Uh, yeah, I was gonna be brave and say B, but I'll say B minus. <laughs> All right, I'll join you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, what's up next? Next is the Bath Song. Three and a blue for a saga. Chapter one and chapter two are both draw two cards and discard a card. And chapter three is shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard into your library. Add blue, blue. Mm, so clear the minds kind of variant. Or Sam Black card of the set. So it's seeing a lot of cards. Draw two, discard one for two turns. That, that digs you pretty deep. It's also, it's it's not like a clear the mind, because if, if your library is getting low, you can't cast this. That's fair. You, you have to be a bit more uh, judicious about your game plan there. Hmm. Yeah. Like, like, how many cards do you need in your deck to not deck with this? You need five, right? No, six, because you're drawing two plus one plus two plus one. Yeah, yeah. So you need six cards in your deck for this to be uh, not decking you. I don't think it's that hard. No, I'm just, I'm just like... Yeah, 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 you're just yeah, pointing it out, for that's, sure. For that's sure. the allure of this card uh, more than the, you know, the, just the chapters, then that's not a huge upside to me. And, like, draw two, discard a card. So it's basically draw four, discard two for four mana over two turns, which is fine, but not great, especially when you're going to be, like, looting anyways if you're tempting the mm. ring. Plus, plus that... I, no, no, so go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I just, I'm... When I first read this card, I was like, oh, it looks like a nice value card. But then, like, the more I thought about it, I started to come down on it. I do really like after two turns of drawing cards, you get to add some mana. Like, that, that is... Adding that blue-blue is pretty nice, too. I don't know. I think I'm probably going to be a bit higher on this one. Like, I, I you know, it's, we, we talked about the <laughs> the pitfalls of, of expensive Sorcerer Speed card draw. But I think this one's got enough going on that I'm, I'm going to give it a C+. Yeah, I was going to say C. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. So we're not that far off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next one, Gandalf, our first Gandalf card. Friend of the Shire, three and a blue for a 2-4 flash legendary creature. You may cast sorcery spells as if they had flash. It also says, whenever the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than Gandalf to be your ring bearer, you draw a card. Yeah, this card's pile of value. Yeah, this is sweet. So, you flash it in, maybe you did two drop, maybe you just block a 3-3 three three or something. Um, but then, yeah, if you, if you turn all your ring bearing things into draw a card, like that, that really adds a lot onto the ring bearing mechanic. And it's not like, it's not, there's no limit of one per turn. So if you like have those blue cantrips that tempt, like each one of those are drawing you two cards. Yeah. Huh. And we, the more I look at blue, the more I, I, there's more instance in flash stuff than I even assume there might've been like blue really does play it into speed quite well. Yeah. Yeah, this card's I like this card. I I think I would start B minus for Gandalf. I was gonna go C plus. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my B minus, but yeah, that's that's a cool card. Okay. What's up next? Next we have Meneldor, Swift Savior. Three and a blue for a three three legendary bird soldier with flying. Whenever he kills the combat damage to a player, exile up to one target creature you own, then return it to the battlefield under your control. <laughs> So it's like a, it's a phantom monster with vigilance for the, as, as its baseline, kind of. And sometimes you get pretty good abilities. Hmm. Yeah, so like phantom monster, you know, just like many cards we talked about, it's time is coming gone as just awesome card. You, you kind of have to ask for a little bit more on your four mana, three, three flyer. But I do think that's probably enough to, to make it a playable yeah. card. Yeah, like the thread of this if you have like any even if you're coming to play is just like a scry one mm -hmm. like it's pretty good to hit and then untap something in scry one yeah and, and again there's not if your opponent is spending a removal spell on your four minute card it's not a disaster in this set because we have aside from a few we might see in the future we haven't seen some uber efficient removal spells or anything so I, i'm not super super worried about the tempo hit you hit you take there yeah i i'm not super high on it you know definitely but i think i would just give melandor a c 
Uh, yeah, sure. That cool. sounds about right to me. Uh, up next, we've got Horses of the Brunin. This is three blue blue for a sorcery. Return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands, scry one, and then the ring tempts you. Yeah, I... I think this card's better than how, how much I'm going to play it. <laughs> I, I, I don't like expensive cards that, like, are card disadvantage, but this does a lot of things. I like it in blue green a lot. Like it's the blue green seems to really want this, not just like the scry one on tap, but just bouncing two things to get your tempo your 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 reasonably large creatures in. Yeah, and then because you're tempted, like you're also getting you probably another loot because they can't block because you've bounced two things and I'm sure this card's good. I just I don't <laughs> like that this card's good. It's it's gonna be you have to be um just like you know, we had it's not the exact same card, but I, I a lot of people Ask me, when do you like playing Wicked Slumber? Which is the tap, two things they don't untap. Um, and basically, you have to be a, a tempo deck. You have to be a deck that's attacking. And Do you want Do you want to know how many times I've main decked Wicked Slumber in this format? I would assume zero, if you're, if you're setting me up for this question. Yeah, big fat O. Oh. <laughs> and, and I've main decked it when I, I haven't had a, a perfect deck, I will say. I'm not like ever like, oh, this deck really could have used the Wicked Slumber, you know? And you're right, you can never use this on defense. So is a sorcery. You know, it's expensive. I don't know. What what say you for horses of the Bruin Inn? I'm I'm just gonna give it a C and I'm gonna I hate it. Like it's I'd I'd rather have either a hot take or a brave take, but I'm just gonna give it a C. Alright, yeah, I saw I was gonna go too. <laughs> C for horses of the Bruin Inn. We're so boring. Yeah, okay. so boring, I know. Um Next up is Soriman the White. This is four and a blue for a four-four legendary creature. Ward two. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you amass orcs two. This I I like this thing. Yeah, this is cool, and it you know that that ward two that's that's meaningful. I don't know how much you know that that cast your second spell each turn. Sometimes that that line of text is a lot worse than it reads, but I think in the blue, blue decks, I'm not too worried about it. Like it's it's worse than it reads because you empty your hand, but I think the blue decks are gonna have a good amount of just like velocity going. How many times do you need to trigger that to be happy though? Once. Once. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and then like when you cast this, what's killing it on your opponent's turn? Yeah, not really a ton. Also, this is this is instant speed. Like you can just you know you, it's it's uh it's not restricted to your turn or anything. So you can like flash in quote unquote your your or a mass orcs too. Yeah, you can also play this and then like a one mana spell on turn six and it immediately do something. The four four does kind of like I I am a little bit weary of the four four. I will say, like five mana four four hoping to untap. Like it's got a lot of the hallmarks we were talking about about the um like the three threes that were, were kind of like. Could be good. Like, this, this actually just reads to me like one of those three threes for four mana that you hope to untap with. It's a little bit small for its body. Yes, Ward 2 makes it a little bit better, but still you're, it's going to get attacked into a little more often. I'm, I, I'm actually talking myself down on the card a little bit. Uh, okay, did, go, let's go back to... I keep referencing AFR cards, which is weird. But, like, <laughs> AFR, where blue is horrible, had a, a five, you know, three blue, blue, four, five, Ward 3. Right. And that card was pretty good. I would say that the five tough this substance kind of solves the problem I'm, I'm worried about though. Like you, you the, the thing that was great about that card is you just like could not attack into it a lot of the time, and I think that's not going to be true for the four toughness. But no, like, what four drops are attacking it? All the four drops are three threes in this set. No, like like you know you have a trick, you have you know whatever. I think there's maybe maybe I'm too worried about that, but hmm. yeah, I, I'm going to be lower on that. I think I think we're gonna this is another one we're going to be a bit uh, divergent on. I I'm going to give Sorman. A C minus. C minus? I'm yeah. going to go C plus. Okay. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. And that brings us on to black again. Back to the commons. Our first black common is Haunt of the Dead Marshes. Single black mana for a 1-1 one, one Nightmare Elf. When it enters the battlefield, you scry one. And it's got the ability to in a black return Haunt of the Dead Marshes from your graveyard back to the battlefield tapped and activate only if you control a legendary creature. You know, this thing seems play like it's an infinite blocker for ring bearers. Mm -hmm. if but they still get to loot. Um, I could see this being playable. Like I, I think this thing's going to be solid. Yeah, it does enough little things. Uh, you know, it, you know, you get looted into the graveyard, maybe get some free value. 
Black does sacrifice thing. So yeah, let's, I'll just say C minus. I agree with that. Yeah, C minus sounds good. Cool. Uh, we got Lash of the Balrog here. Single black mana for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or pay four. You probably know what's coming. Destroy a target creature. We've seen this a lot. Single black mana, sack a thing, bone splinters, or you can pay for to kind of kick it to not have to sack. Uh, probably better in a set with mass. Yeah, I mean, you know I don't normally like this type yeah. of card. I, I just hate sacrificing something and, and two for one in myself. Yep. But I do agree that it's probably going to be a little bit better with a mass. I guess the counterpoint to that is, though, there's we haven't seen like a ton of like huge must answer threats. I guess I guess that'll come in, in that'll the come tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I think I just want to give Lash of the Battle Rock a C plus. C plus. I'll go. I'll go C minus. All right, fair enough. Uh, what what's up next? Next we have Sam's Desperate Rescue. Black for a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. The ring tempts you. Ooh, very cheap, tempting, and a pretty decent effect. Single black mana returns something to the, from the grave. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah, this is another way to like double spell too, right? Yeah. Like it just returns it and you can cast it right away. Definitely. I think, I think I'm normally going to be pretty happy to play the first copy of this. Yeah, first copy, you're probably going to get a C for this one. Yeah, I think I'm in, I was going to go C as well. Cool. Uh, Shilob's Ambush, single black mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus two in games. Death touch till the turn. And you make a food token. That's a heck of this a trick. This card is nice. Yeah, that's a trick. Wow. <laughs> a value trick. Like, usually the value tricks cost two, three mana. But one mana, you're going to win a lot of combats with plus one, plus two, and death touch. Yeah, this yeah, like, win a combat and get a, get a rectangle for one mana is pretty... And, like, this, it can even just be like your one one eats their six six or like trades with their six six counter a burn spell uh, counter a fight spell you know like yeah i i'm gonna go c plus on this one this is another really good trick i think i'm gonna go b minus okay wow okay <laughs> yeah even higher I, 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 really I, like this card. I, I don't mind that at all uh next up we've got easterling vanguard one in a black for a two one human warrior and when it dies you amass orcs one yeah this is the black cycle of what i talked about yep. two ones for two dies ability and i, and I kind of like this card yeah, I think it's just a solid card. I'd give this one a C. Yeah, sure. Cool. I think we gave the other two Cs as well, maybe. So. Yeah, I think I like, that's that we're blazing through these now. We know most of the mechanics. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah we're pros now. We've done all our big speeches on all the mechanics. Now we can just fire them off. Yeah, and, then, and come it. to something that's interesting. We'll take a minute, but we'll just otherwise go through it. Mordor Muster. One and a black for a sorcery. You draw a card, you lose a life. Amass Orcs 1. So if this was just always on a 1-1, one, one, we've seen cards like this before. Mm -hmm. And that losing one life does matter. Um, so I, I think this is worse than that. So this is probably worse than it looks. I think so too. Yeah, because in, in the middle of the game, like if you ever, have, or like they get worse in multiples, which is kind of awkward, right? Like you you want your comments to be like, your, your great comments to be like, oh, I take this and I take all the copies they can get. Uh, you're not that happy actually after the second one. So I think the first one's probably like a C plus. Like if if this is one of your few things that amasses, it's great. Not going to be that likely. It's going to be one of the few things. But I think it just diminishing returns past the first one. So you want to go like C on this? Yeah, or? I think C. I think C. Okay. All right. What's next? Next we have Morgul Knife Wound. One and a black for an aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets minus three, minus O, oh, and has, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile this creature unless you pay two life. <laughs> it's another one of these effects that they're, like, just pushing, trying to make us play them. I still think this one's pretty bad. Like, it, it, if you're aggressive, you're not getting an attack, and if you're defensive, they can probably play the two life if it's, like, some creature with a good ability they want to keep around. So I, I think this is probably close to an F. Yeah, I had D minus. Like, it just, just gives them a blocker for your ring bearer. Yeah. And, like, well, it, yeah. It's, it's no, no stat wound. That, I, yeah, I had D minus. Yep. Uh, Nasty End is up next. We got one of the black for an instant. As an initial cost to cast it, you sacrifice a creature. You draw two cards, but if the sacrifice creature was a legend, you draw three cards instead. I don't like this. Yeah. It's... Like, even, even Village Rights, it's sometimes hard to leave up. And this is two mana. I could see, you know, we were talking about ways that you want to, you know, sacrifice your amass tokens. Like, that's not too bad to cash in one of your uh, half of a card for two cards like 
1.5 for one for two mana. Um, and then sometimes they're going to go for a removal spell on your legend. Yeah. So what do you want to give it? <laughs> I wasn't going to give it a high grade. I just, you know, just you came in like, ah, I don't really like this. I was going to give it a, a D plus still, but I think it's okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a D. Okay. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Orcish Medicine. One in a black for an instant. Kind of brutal art here. Target creature gains your choice of indestructible or lifelink until on a turn. Amass Orcs one. Yeah, this is a weird trick. Like, it doesn't win a combat. The lifelink. This card's... It's it's bad, it right? It's weird. So, I th it's designed to be played, like, with your amass stuff, right? Because, like, giving lifelink or indestructible for your, to your dragon creature and plus one, plus one is, like, kind of cool. Um, I think there it's, like, passable if your deck is truly focused, like, has a lot of amass. Like, unlike the... Last one of the previous ones where it's like, oh, I, you, the more mass you have, the, the worse this gets. I think the more mass you have, the better this gets. But even still, I don't think it's great there. I, I would give this Orgish Medicine a D. Yeah, and it's also annoying that, like, you can't make the token and then give it Indestructible. Yeah. Which would be, like, kind of nice if you could just, like, flash in a 1-1 one, one Indestructible. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. It's it's a little bit inflexible in weird ways. So, yeah, D for Orgish Medicine. Uh, then we have the Black Breath. One, uh, two and a black for a sorcery. Creatures your opponent's control gets negative one, negative one until end of turn. The ring tempts you. Yeah, so we kind of alluded to being punished for having X1s, and this is one of the most obvious ones. Yeah. Uh, and I, it, cards like this are interesting because either, like, in, in a set where there's a lot of X1s, either these cards are very good because they kill a lot of things, or these cards are so good and so prevalent that X ones become <laughs> less playable right. and make these cards like less good. So I'm not sure where on the sliding scale this is going to be, but I, I do think like if you're killing their two drop and having the ring tempt you, it's not great. But when, if you're getting two things with this, it's amazing. It's probably just a sideboard card, though, right? Like I I don't think you should main deck this card. I think I think too often it's going to do almost nothing i wasn't gonna give it a sideboard grade i think i'm in like the d plus range mm -hmm. all right because i do think it's like post combat you can do like the ring tempting you is not yeah, nothing that's true there's a lot of x ones like whites commons were all one ones two ones three ones yeah. tokens <laughs> i'm not super convinced i'm gonna give the sideboard grade but all right yeah uh, what's up next? Next we have Claim the Precious. One black black for a sorcery. Destroy a target creature. The ring tempts you. So, when I first saw this, or I, th I should say, when everybody else first saw this, they were like, oh, it's a like, you know, murder and the ring tempts you. And I was like, ah, instant speed is so much worse than sorcery speed. But, like, uh, it's still pretty solid for what we have to work with. <laughs> I think, you know, like... I... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Well, the part of the is that, like... A lot of times you want to be tempting the ring pre-combat anyways. Right. Yeah, I I, I think this card is still going to be overrated. I, th I think it's going to perform, uh, like, you know, in 17 lands, it's going to have, like, a lower win rate than people are expecting. It's going to be a card you play, and probably a card you're happy to take relatively early. I'm going to give this a C+. I, I do think that it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I had just written down C+, for yeah, myself. Just note that Sorcery is quite a bit worse than Instant. Yeah, uh, just, just when you, like... Just note that C plus is not a B level card. Right. Like that's just what yeah. we're saying here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, next card is Dunland Cribane. This is three and a black for a one one flyer. I mentioned this one earlier. Two and a black. Two and a black. Two and a black. Sorry, two and a black for a one one flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you amass orcs too. So it's like reverse uh, preening champion. <laughs> yeah, get the the flying bodies a little smaller. I this card looks good though. Yeah, no, it's still very good. You know, no, no, no doubt about it. Like, you can get a lot worse than Preening Champion and still be great. Oh, yeah, exactly. There's a yeah, big, lot of room there. I would give this one a, a, a B plus. Or sorry, B minus, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, this This is a B level card. Yeah, this card is quite good. And I'll join you on a B minus. All right, and what do we have next? Mordor Trebuchet. Two and a black for a 1-4 artifact creature wall. It has Defender, and whenever you attack with one or more goblins and or orcs, Create a 2-1 colorless construct artifact creature token with flying named Ballistic Boulder that's tapped and attacking that you sacrifice at the end of combat. So I think I, I kind of was like toying around with this card and thinking like, oh, it's kind of a cool card. 
I think it's just like Wind Drake that can't attack sometimes and blocks a little bit better, but I don't think that makes up for it not attacking sometimes, you know? Okay. I see I I yeah, I read this card and I was like, oh this I guess the annoying thing is you sacrifice the end of combat instead of end of turn, so you can't like because there's a lot of ways to sacrifice right. extra rectangles in this set. Um, but I don't know if enough of them are instant mm -hmm. to make that great. We haven't seen a ton, even in Black at Common so far. Well, there's there's been like a Bone Splinters and a Village Rights already, right? Right, and the like the Bone Splinters is it doesn't work. Cause, it's yeah, sorcery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess you're not always gonna have an orc and or goblin, and otherwise it's just a one four. So what what, what do you want to give this? I was gonna give this like a D. Honestly, I th I think it's much worse than it reads. A D. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna go. F All right, fine. I'll just go D plus. Just only <laughs> slightly not higher. All right, cool, cool. Uh, next up we have Urukai Berserker, two and a black for a three two. When ETBs, the ring tempts you. I, I like this card. Yeah, solid. Yeah, because, like, I mean, at its worst, it's a 3-2 Skulk that's a legend, right? Like, at, at its worst. Yeah. I think. And it makes all your future ring temps better. And that's probably a C. Yeah, I was going to give this thing a C+. Plus. Okay, yeah, I'm going to stick with my C. Uh, oh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the scourge of commander players everywhere. Merkwood bats, three and a black for a 2-3 flyer. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life things not like it's it's threatening to do some stuff right because yeah. creating tokens like all the the one ones and white black are tokens all the food are tokens all the amass stuff is tokens and you don't need to have them lose a ton of one life triggers for this thing to be pretty good yeah i i think that it's fine basically i i think you can yeah. have some decks yeah. where it's like you really go off with it like so much of your stuff is triggering this um and and i'm not like I'm skeptical slightly about the four mana, two, three body, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. I think it's, uh, you know, probably got, uh, probably got some, some prestige to its name. People are going to probably take it pretty highly early on, but I think it's probably I, C minus maybe. I, well, C minus? I wrote C. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah. Cool. Snarling Warg, three and a black for a three, four menace. As long as you control a goblin or orc, it gets plus one, plus O. Oh. A four four minutes if you yeah. have a goblin or orc. Yeah, that's that's not bad. That's yeah, that's not bad. I mean, we just saw uh, the four three menace from Mom be not great. Yeah, uh, that was like there's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah. I don't think the reasons hit as hard here. No, definitely. And then the fourth point of toughness also avoids the the lightning strike in the set. So I think this thing's got some some potential to, to hit pretty hard. Yeah, I was just gonna give Snarling Warg a C. See, yeah, see, sounds oh. good. Uh, and then we have, ooh, here's kind of an interesting one. The Torment of Golem. Three and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards it, and you amass orcs too. Yeah, this is this is the card where I actually, like, really started thinking hard about how good a mass is. Because mm -hmm. if, if you're making a 2-2 two -two and coercioning them, I really like that card. But if you're like coercioning them and putting two counters on on an existing creature, that does not sound like a good card at all. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? Yeah. So I, I'm. I'm not. I think it's still on the good side. Like mm -hmm. I think I like this thing. But I could be talked down if you're trying to do that to no, me. No, no, I wasn't actually. I, I was gonna say like. So this is the comparison everybody's been making is Toll of Invasion from War of the Spark, which was one mana less. You amass one less. That card was one of the best commons. Um, it just like that was in a format where the I think the delta between the best cards and the worst cards was probably larger than this one. So taking one of their more important cards mattered a little bit more. Um, and I think adding a mana on like. It's gonna, it's gonna, you know, make it so that sometimes you don't nab the card that you really want to nab because, like, four mana coercion, you're only gonna nab their expensive stuff or their more situational stuff or maybe their removal cards. Um, so I, I was just gonna give this a C, and it's, I think it's a little bit of a hedging C because I can see it going either way. Um, it basically, like, the, my thoughts on the card are, are that I like the idea of it. I'm not sure how much adding a mana, like, drags it down from. I like, I would give 12 Invasion a, a B minus, basically. That's how good it was. I think it probably does drag it down enough that I'm going to give it a C. 
Okay. Yeah. I'll go C plus. Cool. Just I, I like looking at opponents' hands. Yeah, the me too. <laughs> I do as well. So <laughs> What's next? Next, it's Sirith Ungol Patrol. Four and a black for a four five orc soldier. Has the ability to pay one, tap, and sacrifice another creature. Draw a card, then create a food token. It's interesting. It's uh, it's enticing. It's got a lot going for it, but it's also like five mana. It's a big body though. Yeah, what's your take on yeah, this? Yeah, like, this is another way to to throw away that trebuchet because sure. it gives you an orc yeah. and, and gives you an instant way to sack it. But the thing is, when you play a five drop. You either typically want it to give you immediate value, or you want it to be a card that's like helping you end the game. Right. And this isn't really doing either of those. Yeah, I, that's my feeling too. Yeah, there there was a card in Akoria, Bushmeat Poacher, which was four two four. Did this, but you you saw a creature draw a card, gain life equals toughness, and that card was pretty solid. But that that also had an act of treason in that set. I don't think we have we have an uncommon variant, but it's you know uh, not not quite the same and. A whole other man. I I think this card reads pretty well, but I actually think it's going to play out a lot worse than it looks. So I'm going to give this a D plus. Yeah, that's where I was on this as well. Cool. I think that's our last black common here. Troll of Kazad Doom. This is six and a black, or sorry, five, six mana, five and a black for a six five. It's got kind of like super menace. It can't be blocked by except by three or more creatures, and it's got swamp cycling one. So this is our black swamp cycler. I, I just like the other two. Well, uh, the blue one, not as much. The white one, I liked a lot. This one, I like a lot as well. I like this one a little bit less than the white one. I think just like it's kind of big dummy, doesn't have any TB. Uh, I we gave the, the white one a C, I think. I would probably give this one a C minus, maybe a D plus. Okay, I was gonna go C on this. Okay, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with my C minus. I think it's just like a little bit worse than the white one. And uh, on to the uncommons Golem's Bite. Single black mana for an instant. Target creature gets negative two, negative two until end of turn. So nice little disfigure. Also has an ability, weird on an instant, but exile it from your graveyard and pay three and a black. The ring tempts you and activate only as a sorcery. Card's great. Great, yeah. Like, disfigure is great. Uh, that, that tempts upside is great. I, nothing to say bad of it. I, I want to give Golem's Bite a B. I was going to go B. Plus oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Uh, oh, read our next golem card for us here. Next is Golem Patient Plotter. One and a black for a 3-1 legendary halfling horror. When it leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Pay black, sacrifice a creature. Return Golem from your graveyard to your hand. Activate only as a sorcery. So that's kind of nice. 3-1 three, like, three that your opponent, like they're going to want to trade off with the 3-1. And that gives you a little bit of value. I don't know how much that sacrifice ability really comes up. Like, it's a sack outlet, but... Well, okay, so, yeah. sorry, sorry. I, keep, I started interrupting you no, more. No, no, go I, ahead. I... Can't you just sacrifice this and return it? No, because it has to be... Oh. <laughs> yeah, sacrifice of Look creature. Look at the wording, right? Return... Like, it doesn't target. That's so strange. Yes, I think you're right. And maybe somebody in chat can correct us but it doesn't say like only activation in your graveyard it doesn't say huh okay chat that's saying it has to be chat saying it has to be it's implicit okay i that's what i would read too but it is interesting yeah that, 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 that's uh, probably how they intended it but when i read this card i <laughs> like kind of did a double take thinking like wait a second apparently return implies it has to be in the graveyard okay so it's, it's it's like an implicit thing okay so it does have to be in the graveyard so let's yeah skip past that then okay yeah because i guess to announce the ability you pay the cost but you have to already be announcing the ability and it's not a legal ability when it's not in the graveyard so i still like it that, that makes sense but i still like if this is three one when it leaves the battlefield ring temps you i'd be pretty happy about it and then it's got a little oh bit yeah the card looks, looks great yeah yeah b minus for golem um, I'll go higher than that. I think I'm going to go B. All right, you're higher, a little bit higher on the golem cards than me. <laughs> uh, next up is Gore Bag of Minas Morgul. One and a black for a 2-2. Two -two. Legendary creature, orc soldier. Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice it when you do. Either draw a card or make a treasure token. Just like, like, why? Why? Like, like what are you doing with it? Is what you're saying? Yeah, like the the, the text. I think that text is basically irrelevant. Cash in your like two two. Like this thing, if you want to cash in your amass creatures, but it's unlikely they'll be able to deal combat damage very often. Mm. 
No, this isn't a combo with the catapult because the catapult tokens aren't. <laughs> they're not goblins. Yeah, the catapult's not an orc they're or like goblin. rocks or something. Yeah, like ring bearer. Like if you, if you make your your uh, mass tokens ring bearers and then you can draw a card off that. It's a lot of hoops to jump through. I I think this card's not very good. I I would give this card like a, it's a legendary two two. I think it's with minor upside. I think it's like a C minus or D plus. Yeah, I have it as D plus. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Uh, next up, March from the Black Gate. One in a black for an enchantment. When March from the Black Gate enters the battlefield, uh, and when an army you control attacks, a mass orcs one. Yeah, so it's easy to picture the best case scenario for this, where you just make something and then keep growing it. It's, but but yeah, I'm trying to imagine yeah. the best case scenario, but you, you play it on, like, on two, and then you attack with a two-two, and it gets it. I, I think this card is horrendous. <laughs> Is horrendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're saying it's not. Good. Yeah, okay. Oh man, yeah. I think it's like an F. Okay, okay. I, I'm with you. Okay, there. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like the worst version of Bitter Blossom I've ever seen. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. What's next? Next, we have Grim a Worm Tongue. A two and a black for a one four legendary human advisor. Your opponents can't gain life. Tap. Sacrifice another creature. Target player loses one life. If the sacrificed creature was legendary, a mass orcs two. Hmm. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. I feel like there are probably certain cards that play well with this that aren't necessarily apparent. The baseline's not great. Yeah, the baseline's not great. The gain life is nice against food, but not going to be like that relevant. Like white doesn't even have the uh, like a two-two life linker. Like there's no life link creatures in this set yeah. that I've seen. <laughs> Again, high so... toughness. Low power, same old story we've been saying the whole time. Which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I'm not very excited about this guy. No, I think this is a D. Yeah. All right. Uh, Nazgul. Two and a black for a one, two. Death touch. You, uh, when it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. And whenever the ring tempts you, you put a plus one plus one counter on each wraith you control. And Nazgul is a wraith. And a deck can have up to nine cards named Nazgul. So a little flavor text. You're never actually getting nine of these. Um, that's pretty good. Two, three death touch to ring tempts you. I, I like that. Oh yeah, I think this card's really oh, good. Oh yeah, this is. <laughs> oh yeah, who's that? So Canadian. Oh yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> two, just two Canadians here, just reviewing cards. Um, this is yeah, this is like a, a we gave Frodo a pretty high grade, and I think this is along the same lines. I think I'd give Nazgul a B, B minus. Yeah, I, th I think I'm I'm with you there. Yeah. On a B. Sweet. Yeah, let's do B. B for Nazgul. Next up, Bitter Downfall. Three and a black for an instant. This spell costs three less to cast if it targets a creature that was dealt damage this turn. Destroy target creature, its controller loses two life. Another really good card. Yeah, just, you know, straight up. Uh, most of the time, you're not getting that uh, that discount, but sometimes you will. It's one mana, and most of the time, it's just four mana kill a thing, they lose two. That's great. Yeah, the lose two is what really pushes this. Like, a four mana instant removal spell is just fine. Yep. Attacking on two life to that is, is really nice. I don't think this is still like a, a super high pick or anything. Um, I would put this as like C plus, maybe B oh, minus. I was going to go higher than that. Yeah, I was, I was just going to get this a straight B. I, I think in this set where the removal is kind of meh, like <laughs> you're pretty happy about like four minute instant speed removal spell. No conditions give you like a little bit of upside. Sure. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go to B minus then. Cool. Uh, we got Gothmog, Morgul Attendant. This is three and a black for a human soldier, legendary creature. It's a three, three. When it enters the battlefield, you amass orcs one, and creature tokens you control have death touch. Another, yeah, another card I really like. Yeah, it's uh, we like that that white version. That was a three, three. Comes with the one, one friend. This is a little bit better than that. Uh, I think you know you get the death touch. Also, it's not just your orcs have death touch; it's your creature tokens have death touch. So you know maybe in black white, there's uh, some stuff going on there, or black red. Yeah, this is this is good. I, we gave, uh, or I gave the other a B minus, and, and you were a little bit lower. And I think I'm gonna give this one a B minus as well. I'm gonna go higher than you on. Oh this wow, one. okay, <laughs> interesting. It's gonna be really annoying to play against. Yeah, no, the card's really good. Um, I'm going to go all the way up to. How happy am I to first? I, I want to. I want to say B plus. I might regret this later, but I'll, I'll just I'll just say it. And I'll, we'll, we'll move on. No, I think I think you're actually you're probably more right than I am. Then I, I I agree. I agree. The card's really good. I might even put me up to to a B. 
Uh, we got Grand the Gatebreaker. This is four mana, three and a black for a five five legendary artifact. It's a vehicle. Okay, so four mana, five five trample vehicle. No, trample. <laughs> I didn't say that, but it has trample. Crew three. And it says, as long as it's your turn and you control an army, Gron the Gatebreaker is an artifact creature. So it's no crewing required if you have an army. Yeah, and it like it attacks if you have an army, it attacks as a 5-5 trample for four. That's that's good. Pretty good. It doesn't block so well, but it still threatens the block if you crew. Yeah, but I think this card's enough. Like these black uncommons look pretty solid to me. Yeah, this is it's solid. I, I would definitely call this solid. So I don't know, C plus for Grand? E plus, yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and next up, what do we have? Next, we have Oath of the Grey Host. Three in the black for a saga. Chapter one, you and target opponent each create a food token. Chapter two, each opponent loses three life and you create a treasure. Chapter three, create three tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit token creatures with flying. Wow. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a, a tough one to evaluate. So that, that last chapter is just great. You know, four mana. If it was just four mana, make three tokens. You'd be quite happy with that. Uh, yeah, yes. Take some time to get there. First mode. Uh, so I think, you know, if you put the two first modes in tandem, I think. It's you and opponents, but they both make food. Um, and then your opponent loses three. And you make a treasure. So basically, like, they, they, they have to pay some mana to be net even on life or you know you're giving them a resource maybe to sacrifice that's not great it's not quite net even because you know th that is a resource but you're getting a food you're getting a treasure and you get those three spirits yeah i think it's just too little before you get the spirits and they're also tapped so they don't even block right away right yeah hmm. so my gut says that this card's bad <sighs> yeah i know it it reads like a lot and Man, I, this one's tough. Yeah, I, I think it's just too little for for your four mana when you're for the first two turns. It just is so so little for too long. Even though that last mode is pretty good. So, yeah, what do you want to give this one? I was gonna say D. Okay, yeah, I'll go D on Oath. This is one I could see us being you know changing our minds on as as we play the set. But I think I'll start low on it as well. And our last in common here, Voracious Fell Beast, four black black for a four four flyer. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature, and you create a food for each creature sacrificed this way. So, bam, single player, or in two player, it's just, they sack a thing, you get a food, four, four flyer. Which is good. That's good, yeah, it's just, that's just pretty good. Yo, uh, five, six minute four, four flyer, that's not exciting, but it doesn't take that much to make that card uh, quite a bit better, and you're getting two things here. So, yeah, I like this one, I'd, I'd give it a B-. minus. You're getting, like, three things. It's like, sure. you get the artifact, you get the four, four, and you get something off the board. Yeah, that's sweet. You're going B minus? I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go higher than that. I'm going to go B. B? All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll join you there. I'll actually join you there. Okay. All right. Thoughts on black before we move to red? Yeah, black. So white and black both seem to have better uncommons. Like black seems pretty powerful. I think it's probably the color I like the most so far. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen a color that I think is like really bad yet. Right. So I'm it, it looks like it's going to be a fairly balanced set. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah, we'll definitely see. <laughs> Uh, all right, so moving back to the commons, going to red. Uh, this one, oh, have I read this word yet? <laughs> Rohirrim. Is that right? Rohirrim Lancer? Rohirrim. Rohirrim I think Lancer. It's cool. Oh, so close. Yeah. Single red mana for a 1 1 human knight. It's got menace, and when it dies, the ring tempts you. So, really good ring bearer. Mm -hmm. Basically impossible to block, but it's got that dies text again, and if you're not making this your ring bearer, it's not really that relevant mm -hmm. I, th I think this card's it's probably better than i think it is because like it's a one drop that does something and then it does something else yeah and especially if you're like in a, in a color pair that can sacrifice this easily red has one or two sacrifice things black does you know of course as well um yeah i think this card's okay it's it's not a premium one by any means but I, i'd give it a c minus i was gonna say c what did you say c minus i was gonna say c minus okay yeah. Um, Rush the Room is next. Single red mana for an instant. Target creature you control gets plus one plus one and gains first strike until on a turn. If it's a goblin or orc, it gains haste as well. So it's, uh, you know, bat Kindle of Fury. They keep printing this trick. I really, <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, I, I still don't like it, even in a lower powered set. Yeah. I'm still giving this like a D. That haste mode is like really strange as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, D, D minus. Uh, what's next? Next, we have Battle Scarred Goblin. One in a red for a 2 2 Goblin Warrior. When it becomes blocked, it deals one damage to each creature blocking it. Yeah. 
okay little beater this uh this ability actually like is a little bit better than than it pay, plans it pans out like or then it reads because you always get it in a point sometimes you get in two and then they block it a turn later or maybe you like attack a few things the thing gets blocked you cast a trick it survives it, it's responsible for four points of damage or something so it's not a it's not an awesome card by any means but i would just give it a c yeah, I think like this this text normally what size creature do you want to block a two two? It's with a two one. You right. can't block with a two one. You can't block with a two three. So like you're only really blocking happy blocking with a two two or like a two four. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, this is gonna be annoying enough that I, I think it's gonna be pretty good. Yep, yeah, agreed. B or C for Battlescarred Goblin. Next up we got sure. Breaking the Fellowship. One in a red for a sorcery. Target creature and opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to another creature that player controls. The ring tempts you. Yeah, so you're killing, unless they have two equally sized things, you're killing their second biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a card, like, there's a black card like this that was so controversial just a couple sets ago, and I can't remember what it was. Was it expensive? Sorry, this is not going to be use. This is not going to be useful. But uh, yeah, they needed two things. You got like their second biggest. Oh, uh, incriminate, right? From Streets of New Campana? is that what it was? They sacked. Yeah, the place. yeah, and it, and it just and it just never really worked. Like yeah. it was just a bad card. There was also. This, um, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say this is adding the ring tempts you onto it, but I'm still not sure about this. There is also um, mutiny back in Rivals of Ixalan, which is one mana for this effect, and it underperformed basically just it it was not very good i don't think adding the ring temps you makes this card any better so i would actually just give this a d a d yep i'll go i'll go d plus just for the the <laughs> tempting part uh cast into the fire this is an instant one in red choose one exile target artifact or cast into the fire deals one damage to up to two target creatures yeah when i when i first saw this card i had this impression that the ring because because the one ring is is an artifact right, right? like the the million dollar card or whatever yeah. and i thought that the ring emblem was an artifact as well mm -hmm. so i was like oh this is like a really cute way to like remove skulk in mid combat and and have and be able to block the ring bear but like that that doesn't work there's not that many artifacts in the set there are some one toughness creatures but i still think this card's a little too situational yeah i think so too you know you might get some situations where you kill next one and then you finish something off after combat and you're like okay that's like okay but i'm just gonna give this a d as well yeah that's fine but what's up next next we have erebor flamesmith one in a red for a two one dwarf artificer whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell it deals one damage to each opponent that's not bad for all our, our spell sling and stuff we were talking about. I mean, you'd probably prefer this to be like a 1-3 or something, maybe. Um, I guess that's, you know, we've had the card, the Flame Breather um, from Crimson Vow. But 2-1, that's not strict downside for sure. Like, you attack for 2, you get some stuff out of the way. I think it's a solid little card. Yeah. yeah. It's the red cycle of 2-1s for 2 that I kind of like. There I think go. I'll just give it a C. Yeah, let's give it a C. Uh, next right. up, we've got Gimli's Fury. 1 red for an instant. Target creature gets plus three plus two and gain uh sorry, but target creature gets plus three plus two until end of turn. If it's legendary, it also gains trample. Gotta work for the trample here, eh? Well, I mean, I I think a lot of your creatures are gonna be legendary. Yeah, like I sure. wouldn't be surprised if if not that much less than half of your creatures in your deck are legendary. Yeah. Between like the actual legendary creatures and making things ring bears. So I think it won't be that hard to get trample on this and if you do get trample on this it's quite decent yeah if you run amok it tends to be solid i'm gonna give this a c minus i think i think it's mm -hmm. like yeah. yeah i'm with you there yeah it's not quite super efficient it's not quite super value oriented it's just like yeah it's a solid card if, if you could enable it yeah all right here's an interesting one improvised club one in a red for an instant as an additional cost to cast this spell Sacrifice an artifact or a creature. It deals four damage to any target. This is just this is just another power stone fracture. I I, I just don't like. I, they keep trying them in the set, <laughs> and it's interesting. But my default is that I don't like these. So, I do think that the fact that you can, like instant speed, means you can do the, the final flourish thing where you sacrifice a creature that was already going to die, right? And sure. also, like, you know, there's the, we're going to see a, a Lay of the Land variant where it, like, makes a, makes a food when you cat. Like, it's a one mana, go get a land, make a food. Like, I don't know. I think, I think, in actually, this one, I, I know I'm always higher on these cards than you are. You're always lower. You, you end up being right most of the time. <laughs> I might be falling for that trap once again. 
But I think with a mass and the food tokens and this being an instant and going to face, I think this one has enough where I'm just going to give it a C. <laughs> a C. A C is not even like that high of a grade. Though. No, 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 it's not. It's not. Okay, okay. I, it, with this being an instant, I, I can see it being... I'll just go C minus just so I'm not that far off from you. But yeah, I think I think you could be right on this. Okay. I just cool. I thought you were gonna give it a higher grade than no, that. No, no, no. Rally the Hornbergs, this is a big one. This is the one I was shouting out a while ago. One red for sorcery. You create two one one human creature tokens and human cre humans you control gain haste until end of turn. Yeah, we just had uh, sorcery that made two one ones Rally's reinforcements, and that was obviously in a set with Convoke, it was really good. But making two bodies for one card for two mana is still going to be pretty decent, I think. Yeah, I think this is quite good. I, I And it also, yeah, once again, two human triggers for things that care about that. Which, mind you, you know, as, as we've gone through this, there really haven't been that many. I think it's like been two. and But I think that the base rate on this is just pretty good. So I, I'm going to give this one a, a, a C+. Plus. Uh, yeah, that's what I wrote down as well. C+. Cool. Plus. Next up, oh man, this has to be top three comments for sure. Smite the Deathless, finally a good removal spell. <laughs> One red for an yep. instant. Smite the Deathless deals three damage to target creature. That creature loses indestructible until another turn, and if it would die, you exile instead. Yeah, this is just it just looks like a B level card yep. to me. I I was gonna give it a B plus, honestly. Just like okay. <laughs> the efficiency, it's just something that uh, hard to come by in this set. What's next? Next we have Gimli's Axe. Two and a red for an equipment. Equipped for two mana. Equipped creature gets plus three plus zero, oh, and as long as equipped creature is legendary, it has menace. Feels weird that that's, Gimli's that's Axe isn't a legend. Expensive. But... Yeah, expensive on all the ends. Menace is nice on a three and a plus three, but it's also not like deal like game breaking in a lot of spots. I I'm gonna give this a D. I think I just you know has yeah. it has to prove itself. Five uh, mana and just like plus three plus so and uh, yeah no no thanks. Uh, next up, Haradrim Spearmaster, two and a red for a two three reach. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Yeah, yeah, this we've seen a card like this that didn't have reach, but it could target itself, mm -hmm. and it was quite good. And I think this is about as good. Like it can't attack as a three three, but reach is. Is a nice upside. Yeah, and again, you know, two, three, making make that your ring bear. It's not so bad. So yeah, C plus. Yeah, I, th I think I like C plus on this one. Coral's end is next. Two and a red for a sorcery as additional uh, cost to cast. Additional cost to cast a spell. Discard a card, uh, and you draw two cards and create a one one white human soldier creature token. Yeah, this thing's decent. Yeah, it's cool. Probably gonna play one, one, one in most of your red decks. I would say. A card, draw two. Yeah. It, I think it's probably slightly better than your average uh, tormenting voice filler possibility effect. So, yeah, I just give this a C. See, sure, yeah. C sounds good. All right, what do we have next? Next is Swarming of Moria. Two under red for a sorcery. Create a treasure token and a mass orcs two. Hmm. So similar to Plundering Barbarian, except for that a mass not exactly being a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, and not having the modality of being able to blow up a, an artifact if you want. Yeah, I, I thought Plundering Bar or Sun Plundering? Yeah, Plundering Barbarian was a solid card. Uh, quite, quite a, you know, I'd give it a C, basically, in that format. And this is worse. And, yeah, I, I think this one's just, like, not that great. It does do the, like you said, it's a creature that's a, 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 a sorry, spell that's a creature. Yeah, I got that going for it that didn't, you know, we didn't care about that in the last set. I think it's still probably going to be like a C minus, though. I'm not a fan. That's what I wrote down, too. Yeah, C minus. Yeah. Next up, we got Fire uh, Fire of Orthanc. This is three and a red for a sorcery. Destroy a target artifact or land. Creatures without flying can't block this current turn. Uh, nope. All, all the cards, all the things that people hate in one, right? <laughs> yeah. land, land destruction, not being able to block, yeah. and the falter effect. It's uh, been a long time since you've seen a Demolish, but yeah, this is not a good card. Not a good one, no. no I'm going to give this one. This is not a, uh, what's it called? The uh, Hazardous Blast. That is That was a different card, for sure. Yeah. Is it, you're giving this an F or, or D minus? Yeah, I'll give it I'll give it D minus. D minus? Okay. Olog High Crusher, three and a red for a 4-4 four, four Trample. Okay. It can't block unless you control a Goblin or an Orc. Hmm. Yeah, that's... I think that's fine. Yeah. Like if it, in the decks that you wanted, it's it attacks pretty well. I think you're gonna have a goblin and orc, and you know, especially like red black, a decent amount of the time. 
Huh, it's yeah. kind of funny. This is a troll, so it doesn't work. You can't have multiple copies that uh, they don't they don't key off each other. Yeah, I just give this like a C, C minus probably actually. C minus sounds yeah. good on this. Yeah, not not blocking even some of the time is is a pretty big downside. Yeah. Relentless. Uh, uh let's try this again. Relentless. Rohirrim. Rohirrim. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay, what it is. Okay, Rohirrim. Cool. Yeah. Uh, three in a red for a four three, and when it ETBs, the ring tempts you. It's also a human for what it's worth. I, I like this card. Yeah, for sure. I think we we definitely talked. Uh, you know, we, we've definitely like liked the creatures that just ETB temp the ring uh, or the ring yeah. tempts you, and this is no different. It's it's okay. So I give this a C. Yeah, just like the last the black card that was a three two for three that you gave a C and I gave a C plus. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Sweet. All right. What's next? Next we have War Beast of Gorgoroth. <laughs> four and a red for a five four beast. Whenever it or another creature you control with power four or greater dies, a mass orcs two. Yeah, it's it's okay. Like I definitely better than infected defector from uh, <laughs> from the last. You know, five four is, is a much better baseline. Yeah, I still don't love it though. I don't know. What do you think? Well, we just saw like a four four for four in red. Mm -hmm. If you like curve that into this. Then you've basically gotten like you're, you're playing not that understated creatures, and you've made a free four four. Sure. I think this card's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Still, yeah. I don't know. I, what, what grade would you give this? I wanted to give this a C plus. Wow, that's that. Yeah, I was gonna give it like a D plus, whole other grade lower, but. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm not convinced just yet. We'll see how it plays out though. You're going D plus. We're gonna go D full plus, yeah. order grade different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is one where this is a hill where one of us is gonna die on. I guess <laughs> certainly. Um, oil <laughs> oil font. This is six mana, five and a red for a six four trample. It's an elephant. When it attacks, another creature you control gets plus two plus zero oh, and gains trample. Mountain cycling for single red mana, colorless. Oh, sorry, single, single colorless mana. Yeah. Just like all the rest. Yeah. Elephant is. This is probably. I think I like this. Better than the blue one, but worse than the other two? I think so. Yeah, I think this is, like, the second worst one, most likely. So this is probably, like, it does a lot when you cast it. It's on the battlefield and it sticks and you get, like, it's a lot of trample damage. But it's still just, like, six mana, even with the cycling. So I'm going to say yeah, C-. Yeah, C-, C minus seems fine. Okay. All right, Uncommons here. First up, we've got Fear, Fires, Foes. <laughs> ah, I know. I, I, let me try this again. Fears, Fires, Foes. Got that exclamation mark. Had to do that. X and a red for a sorcery. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Fears, fires, foes. Deals X damage. It's only got one S. It's fear, oh, fear fire, fire, foes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, should we do it again? <laughs> Deal X yeah, damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, no. <laughs> so this, yeah, X and a red. Deals X damage to target creature and one damage to each other creature with that of the of that same controller's creature. With that, that's that's a lot of damage. So it's an X burn spell to a creature, and then picks off all the X ones. This card's nuts, isn't it? I think so. Like, for like, you know, it's not always going to pick off multiple things, but it's going to make blocks worse for the opponent when you cast a pre-combat. And sometimes it is just going to be nuts. Like, you kill three things with this. Yeah, like, I... This is probably a hot take, but I'm, like, almost putting this on, like, A- range. Whoa! Like, I think oh, God. <laughs> I think this card is good. I, I do want to temper that with the fact that, like, X and a red spells, that you're paying a pre... Like, it's it's attacks, right? Like, you're never... You're very rarely trading up on mana if you are just killing one thing. But that upside is there. Yeah, but well, we've seen a lot of, like, three twos for three, three threes for four... Four threes for five, mm -hmm. or like four fours for five. I look. I'm not denying the upsides there. Just, just point that out. I was gonna give this a B minus, but okay. I'm I, gonna, I'm gonna go B plus. All right. Yeah, I love it. I love the take. All right. What's our yeah. next uncommon? Next, we have Ranger's Firebrand. Red for a sorcery. It deals two damage to any target. The ring tempts you. Oh, sorcery speed shock with ring tempts you. Yeah, it's like a dead weight with upside. Right? Yeah, basically that's a re that's a really good way to put it. Yeah, I like this. I, I think it's like a, a B minus. Yeah, I think I, I like this at a B minus too. Cool. Next up, we got Goblin Fire Leaper. This is one in a red for a one one. Uh, Goblin, of course, one in a red. Goblin Fire Leaper gets plus one plus zero until end of turn, 
And when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. Yeah, still decent. We've seen a lot, like, there's a lot of X1s in the format, right? Mm -hmm. Which, and this is another way to punish them. Like, red has a lot of ways to punish X1s. Uh, like, even if you never pump this, a 1-1 one, one that dies and deals 1 to something yeah, it trades is not horrible. With no additional mana, it trades with a 2-2, two, two, right? Yep. Yeah, I think this is an okay one. I I'd probably just give this a C. I was going to go C+. Plus. Okay, I'll keep my C. Okay. Uh, Book of Mazerbull. This is a saga. Two in a red. First chapter is Amass Orcs 1. Second chapter is Amass Orcs 2. Third chapter is creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain menace until end of turn. Yeah, so it immediately makes a one one, which is not great, and then it grows, and then plus one plus zero and menace to your whole team, which is pretty decent. It's it's essentially a three three that can't block the first turn, and then pumps yeah. your team at the turn after. That's, yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad. It's not. It's it's slow. Yeah, it's well. Is it that slow though? Like, okay, so you cast this on turn three and you're attacking as a three three. Well, it doesn't. It, sure, but like defensively, I mean, it's. Oh, sure, it's... sure. Like, yeah, it, you, you can't block. Your, your three three does not block their three power creature or a three drop, most likely, if you need it to block. Yeah, and then the third chapter does nothing if you're on defense, right? Like, and, and they know it's coming. Yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna give it a C, but <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think I could, I think I could see a C. You know, it basically like it's got the downside of you know it is not a great blocker, but it also has the upside of like that's a decent amount of damage on turn like on the third chapter. It, it, it's you know I guess once you if you don't cast this on turn three, it is a little bit awkward. To just like it is quite slow after like okay, it's my turn five play. It's not great. Although maybe at that point you don't mind as much because the third chapter will do a lot, and you've already got an army to that the, the chapter one's kind of hasty. I would say it could see, but you know, I can see it going either way. Yeah, this could. Th I could see this being significantly better than a C. Right. But I think I'm just gonna stay at C for now. All right. What do we have next? Fiery inscription. Two and a red for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it deals two damage to each opponent. <laughs> so it's like a gutter snipe on an uh, enchantment that uh, the ring tempts you. That's interesting. So pretty build around e but two damage for each of your spells that adds up really quickly hmm. it does but it also just like doesn't it do doesn't anything. really do anything <laughs> yeah like i think in most spots you'd rather have the two one that pings for one on instance and sorceries right yeah i don't think i love this i hmm. it's a tough one yeah i think i'm on like d plus for this yeah i'm I'm going to give it a low grade too, but definitely reserving full judgment until we play with it. Because this one is another one that definitely, uh, bearing how it, the format plays out, I could see just being like quite a bit better than that. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say D plus too, but we'll see how okay. it goes. Uh, next one. Oh, this is this is one I really like. This is Grishnok, Brash Instigator. Two and a red for a 1-1 one, one legendary creature, Goblin Soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you amass orcs too. And when you do, until end of turn, you gain control of target non-legendary creature. An opponent controls with le power less than or equal to your amassed army's power. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Yeah, this card's really good. Yeah, well, awesome. Uh, just one of the best in commons. You're getting 3-3 three, three worth of stats across two bodies, which is generally better than just the 3-3 three, three, and that act of treason. Sometimes you get to do a little steal and sack. Sometimes you just get a little more damage. Yeah, this, this card's really good. B plus. B plus, yeah. Great. Yeah. And uh, Rising of the Day is up next. We got th two and a red for an enchantment. Creatures you control have haste. Legendary creatures you control get plus one plus zero. Nope. No thanks. <laughs> nope. It's that, I think it's just yeah. an F, right? Just like, F? yep. Yeah. Nope. Not enough for your mana. They 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 okay. printed, printed these cards a lot in the past, and they're, they've never been good, for what it's worth. What's up next? Next we have Erkenbrand, Lord of Westfold. Three and a red for a 3-3 three, three legendary human soldier. Whenever it or another human enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one plus O oh until end of turn. Yeah, so once again, another human payoff. And this is a pretty good one. And not once per turn. So if you have that thing that makes two 1-1 one, one tokens, your whole team's getting plus two plus O. Oh. Yeah. Got a, it's got a good into the battlefield effect. It's not over the top by any means, but I, I think it's uh, quite a good card. I, I would give this a C+. C+, yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say as well. Cool. 
Ooh, this is a good one. Foray of Orcs. Three and a red for a sorcery. A mass Orcs 2. And when you do, Foray of Orcs deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the amassed army's power. Yeah, nice little flame tongue combo here. It's great, yeah. Like the, the baseline of 2-2 two, two, that deals 2, that's pretty good. But wall time, it's going to deal more than that. I think it's another B+. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm with you on B+, for this. Great. Uh, next up, we got Gimli, Counter of Kills. 3 and a red for a, of course, legendary creature, Dwarf Warrior. It's a 4-3 trample. And whenever a creature in opponent controls dies, Gimli deals 1 damage to that creature's controller. Yeah, it's better than uh, Legolas Counter of Kills. Yeah, that's certainly. For sure. But how much better? This thing, it's like... It's not horrible. No, it's not. It's not exciting either. No, it's not. Like, uh... C minus. C minus. Yeah, I was just gonna give it a C minus. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Aomor of the Riddler Mark. Uh, Riddler Mark. Sorry. This is five mana, four and a red for a five four haste legendary creature, human knight. When it attacks, if you control a creature with greater power amongst creatures on. Oh, sorry. If you uh, when you attack, if you control a creature with the greatest power amongst creatures in the battlefield, you make a one one white human soldier creature token. Yeah, which is almost always right. So. Like, not often your opponents are going to have a six-power creature. Yeah, this is going to be the biggest thing. Like, we just haven't seen that many large, huge creatures. Just I mean, we haven't gone to green, of course, but this is just good. Yeah, I, th I think it's just going to be a... I, you can just look at this as 5-4 haste, make a 1-1. One, one. Which is fantastic. Right, yeah, really good. Yeah, Chimney Rabble might be a good uh, good comparison, honestly. Huh. Yeah, I mean, you can't yeah, block, yeah. but... Yeah, plus one for an extra mana, and it can and it can continue to make one ones. Yeah, I like. I think this is probably just gonna be like a B. Yeah, I almost wanted to give it another B plus, but costing five, I'll I'll stay at I'll stay at B with you there. All right, and that brings us to green. So, quick thoughts on red before we go to our last color here. Uh, and again more great uncommons like we've seen a kind of this trend where the uncommons look really good and the commons look pretty fillery yeah. so finding your lane and like figuring out what color you're supposed to be in the draft i think is gonna be really important in this set i think white is probably oh, sorry uh, red is probably the color that we've seen with the biggest delta between the good stuff and the bad stuff like there's a lot of like i really don't like that and a lot of things were like yeah that's, that's pretty good um you know red also had like a few really conditional things like the falter and the the deal one to two things so yeah, it, no, just like you said about the last colors, nothing really stands out of, I don't think red is markedly worse or better than the other colors. So let's go to our last color, close out here. What's our first green common? We've got Elven Farsight, green for a sorcery, scry three, then you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, draw a card. Yeah, so you scry tribal. But okay, so this is not the same as a lot of cantrips that are kind of like this. It's not like a Seed of Hope. It's not like a, a consider. Like I, I've seen a lot of people kind of, I think, mistakenly compare this to like a consider where it's like, oh, green doesn't get this effect. Uh, and it's not the same effect because you're only looking for, a, you have to be looking for a specific creature type. Uh, you can't find lands with it. So I think if your deck is very creature dense, I'm talking like 18 creatures, and you care about scrying, it's probably a playable card. But I, I imagine this just like isn't that great. Well, you get to see four potentially right scry three to the bottom right. and then the fourth card so we've seen cards like that before where you look at the top four and you get to keep uh like a creature they usually hit but i think that this is yeah worse than it looks i want to say like d plus yeah i i think yeah i think you're just not gonna play this card very often and i'm i often talk people up on these like cantrips to like make your deck more consistent but this doesn't do that in the same way that you generally want to so i'm gonna go d Many partings. Single green mana for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle. Create a food token. So, you know, a little uh, lay of the land action. Replace your land. Your first basic with this. Make a food token. Maybe you're splashing something. But pretty solid card. Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to play this in, uh, like, a, mo a mono green deck, probably. Yeah. And, like, it, the more colors you're playing, the better it gets. Yeah, you do need to make sure that you know you have enough green sources. Of course, you know eight or nine green sources is bare minimum to make sure it actually does uh, fix for your colors and you can actually cast it early. But this is like you're getting two things, two pieces of material for a single mana, yeah. and this is yeah. 
you know, we were kind of talking about, like, do you replace, for the basic land cyclers, you're like, do you replace the land with these? You do replace your first land um, for this card, and I think you're going to be pretty happy about it. And it's also, like, sometimes this is just going to be three mana, find a land, gain three life, because yep. you need the life. Yeah, and, exactly. And it'll be great. Great, yeah. Um, um, C? C plus? C plus, yeah, I'll go C plus. I like, I like C plus for many sure. partings. Mirkwood Spider is next. Single green mana for a 1-1 death touch. And uh, when it attacks, target legendary creature you control gains death touch until end of turn. Yeah, I don't mind 1-1 one, one death touch for one. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, they're good blockers, and especially like it can block any any ring bearer. And it's actually... Uh, like, C? Yeah, it's actually pretty decent as a ring bearer, too, because unlike a regular 1-1, one, one, like your opponent's not going to block, block their 1-3. on the, Like, they can't, right? Like it just uh, It's a jump block. Uh, or it's a trade, I guess. But yeah, I'd give it a C. Uh, also worth noting, small thing. I, I read this is the first spider without reach in like 25 years or something. So <laughs> kind of weird there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, what's up next? Next we have Pippin's Bravery. Green for an instant. You may sacrifice a food. If you do, target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Otherwise, that creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Yeah, I have the tricks. The tricks in this set, they keep impressing. I mean, this is... Quite good. We're to plus two plus two for one mana is kind of the the gold standard, and then plus four is just so much. We saw in uh, Streets of New Capenna where for the family was one of the better commons in that set because they gave plus four plus four, and this is probably a little bit more difficult on average, I would say, than you know that one required you to have what was it four creatures or something in play, and uh, maybe it's a, maybe it's a wash. Maybe it's actually pretty close, but I I do think this is a powerful trick. So how high a rating do you want to give it? I would say a C plus. I think it's on par with the other good tricks we've looked at. Okay, I'm going to say a C. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, once again, another trick. Bombadil's Song. This is one in a green for an instant. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one against Hexproof until end of turn. The ring tempts you. Although, not quite as good in combat, I suppose. More of a protection spell. Yeah, the ring tempting you is a little awkward here because you can't, like, use it pre-combat, mm -hmm. really. Um... Plus one, plus one, hexproof, but doesn't leave anything behind for two mana. I think this thing's fine, but yeah. I'm not excited about it. I was going to say, like, C minus. Yeah, I think so, too. This is this is uh, not got the protection ability of in combat that something like Angelic Intervention did. Yeah. All right, what do we have next? Next, we have Ents Fury. One and a green for a sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control if its power is four or greater. Then that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and fights target creature you don't control. Hmm. Okay. Sorcery speed. <sighs> yeah, you're going to win. The, the plus one, plus one matters a lot here. Um, yes. And, and the counter is nice if you can get that. Sorcery hurts, of course, but it's cheap. And that's, that's more than I can say about a lot of the room we've seen so far. Yeah. Hmm. What's your read on it? I think this thing's pretty good, also yeah. because there's not that much good removal to, like, punish right. you for yeah. fighting, right? That's great. Yeah. There are tricks for what it's worth. This is a fight, not a bite. Um, but yeah, I, I would use a C plus, I think, for Ends Fury. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to say as well. Cool. Plus, Lorian Lookout. One in a green for a 1-3. Elf Scout, when it attacks, you scry one. I'm not big on this. <laughs> it's kind of... Uh, it's got the ring bearer first mode or second mode kind of uh, already a little bit not exactly the same but it's just a one three it continuously triggers your things that care about scrying but i guess you can make this but the ring bearer really with that and there's like there's like better things to ring bear i i, I yeah i think that's it there's just better things to ring bear right so yeah i think this is probably a d yeah i was gonna say d for this okay cool uh, this is a cool one. Mushroom Watchdogs. One in a green for a 2-2. Two, two. Sacrifice of food. You put a plus one, plus one counter on the Watchdogs, and it gains Vigilance until end of turn. Only activate as a sorcery. Yeah, this is nice with the thing that makes food every turn if you don't have one. That's true. Yeah, just feed it. Um, but otherwise, like, you don't really want to be sorcery speed sacrificing food. No, but I so, think... Like, it's, an ups it's an upside, but... I think if you just go find, uh, the, uh, the green one mana spell that goes get a land and make a food and into this. Like, that's a 3-3 three, three on turn 3. Or turn 2. That's not bad. That's Yeah, but there's other things you can do with that food, sure. too, right? Yeah, like, opportunity cost and you, all. There's a lot of times we've been like, oh, you just need to sacrifice something, and you only have so much food to sacrifice. I, I'm... 
any any I don't know if you noticed yet, but anytime it's asking me to sacrifice something, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. want to do it. <laughs> you're like, no, 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 I like my rectangles. Keep those around. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I stand a little bit higher on this than you. Like, I was gonna give this a C plus. C plus. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna give it a D plus, but I will go up to C minus just to be a little closer to you. Like, imagine a curve of the um the farmer, the two three farmer that makes a food, into this. Like, you're attacking for four. I don't know. That's that sounds pretty nice to me, but. And it's a three three. Yeah. And then, okay. And then you end up and you have a two three and a three three, as your like two and three drops, <laughs> which is only like barely slightly above curve. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm I'm optimistic for this. And what can I say? All right. Uh, next up, we've got revive the Shire. One in a green sorcery. Oh no! Spoilers. What happened to the Shire? I haven't seen this in the movies yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, return dagger permanent to from your graveyard to your hand, and you create a fruit food. So two mana regrowth the permanent, make a food. Meh. Yeah, it's uh, this if your deck's slow enough. Yeah, I think you could play this, but I wouldn't be that happy about it. Yeah, it's if you compare it to the black one that regrows a creature and uh, tempts you. How do you how do you weigh that? I think it's probably just better. I prefer the the black one to this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna give this a D plus. I think so too. Yeah, D plus for revive the Shire. Uh, next up, we have Woe's Pathfinder. One in a green for a 1-1 one, one, human shaman. Taps to add one mana of any color. Hmm, interesting. And six in a green, tap. Another target creature gets plus three, plus three in games. Trample until the end of the turn. Yeah, we've seen mixed results on two mana, 1-1 one, one mana dorks. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Port and Tracker is was pretty, it's pretty decent in, in Mom, but on other versions have been pretty bad. Uh, but this one has an ability in the late game that makes me a little bit more interested in this. I, I think this card's pretty decent. Yeah, it definitely self-solves for that problem that I usually have with mana dorks. It's just like, well, it just sits around after it's you've emptied your hand. But this you know, turns into something that your opponent has to care about, like plus three, plus three, and trample. Seven mana is a lot, mind you. I also like that you know, it adds one mana of any color. Like That's something you don't usually get on your common mana dorks. So I don't love it, <laughs> but I think like I, I'm generally lower on mana dorks than a lot of people. Um and like you said, they like range from good to not so good. I'm gonna give this one a C. I I wrote down C plus for myself. All right, yeah, fair I'm enough. A little optimistic on it. Yeah. All right, what's next? Next we have Brandywine Farmer, two and a green for a one one. When it enters or leaves the battlefield, create a food token. Huh. So you really, really have to care about food here. Or your opinion. Yeah, the one one is just like I really like the two three that made one food mm -hmm. and a one one that makes two food it just even if it was two on enters i still think i wouldn't like this card that much it's yeah. just too small yeah just too small I, I it's really hard to get over that that body being basically just a jump blocker I, i'm gonna go d on this one i, I like d plus right. if you really care about food but that's you know it's uh, not gonna happen all that often okay yeah i wrote down d as well next we've got chance met elves this is two and a green for a three two and elf warrior Whenever you scry, you put a counter on the elves, and it only triggers once per turn. This thing can grow, because you can do it on your turn and their turn. Yeah. And I can see this, like, you have control of this growing, unlike a lot of other cards like this, where you kind of need something to happen that involves your opponent doing something. Mm -hmm. um, like a creature dying or whatever, something leaving the battlefield. Like, you, if you're scrying, and this is growing, I think you're going to be pleased enough with this. I, th I think this card's a C. Yeah, I would say, like, it's kind of like a hitting gold card C in your blue-green deck most of the time. But, yeah, yeah C, C all the same. Okay. Um, next one got Gl uh, Galadrim Bow. <laughs> this is two to green for a equipment. It's got flash. The When it enters the battlefield, you attach it to a creature you control, and you untap the creature. Crypt creature gets plus one, plus two, and has reach, and the equip cost is two. I like this thing. There's another card in SNC that was a three mana equipment with flash that gave plus one plus one in first strike, I think, mm. or something. Or first strike when it entered. Uh, the dagger, yeah. Yeah, that was that card played out quite well, and I think this card's better. Yeah, I think so too. The, the ability is you know a little bit better. You, the untapping is better, uh, or that's that's definitely a big upset on this card. Yeah, it's not it's not a card you're gonna be like thrilled to play multiples, but one copy is probably gonna be Z. I was going to go C plus on this. Okay, yeah. I'm going to say C. But... Okay. All right, what do you have next? 
Next we have Mirror Mirror Guardian. Two and a green for a 4-2 dwarf soldier. When it dies, the ring tempts you. Hmm. Okay, well, 4-2, just like uh, Golem we looked at earlier. Like, 3-1, they really have to trade with that. 4-2, same thing, they have to trade with this. So, as much as we were talking about, like, death triggers are much worse than Enter the Battlefield triggers, I, I think this being a pretty beefy attacker and your opponent asking you, like, really needing to block it, I think makes it make up for the fact that it's a death trigger, not an ETB. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, so many 2-1s for 2, though. I, I have this as, like, a C. Okay, yeah. No, I, I wasn't going to go higher than that. I was, I was just going to say a C, but... Okay. Next up, Shower of Arrows. 2 and a green instant to toy, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. Scry 1. Yes, there's, I mean... Enchantments, there's not a lot. Artifacts, there's not a lot. Creatures with flying, I don't think there's a ton either. Like, is this just a sideboard card? Just a sideboard card. Yep. Yeah, okay. Next up, we've got Bag and Porcher. This is four mana, four and a, three and a green for a four four. It's a dwarf. And when it attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Well, I'm not sure what it is what's like suckering me about this set, but these like four <laughs> fours that have like slight upside on attacks, I kinda like them in this set. Well, how much different is this than Converter Beast? Well, but a Converter Beast was two rectangles. It's this two is rectangles, one. yeah. This but it, it's kind of a, you know, the comparison I'm making is it blocks just like Converter Beast right away, quote unquote blocks right away, and then attacks as a five five a lot of the time. I'm not. I'm not trying to talk it up too much. I think I'm probably going to be on the same level as you. I was just going to give it a C, but yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to give it a C. Okay, cool, <laughs> nice. Uh, what's up next? God Dream Guide three and a green for a three four elf scout. When it enters the battlefield, Scry two. Just keep that Scry train rolling. And here's the thing we haven't mentioned about the Scry, uh, the Scry deck is that it it's like inherently good. It's not like it's just like something. It's just like you know you could say. When it enters, it, when an elf enters, you know, you get the trigger on whatever. It, it, this is actually, you're actually doing something. You're scrying too, right? That actually is meaningful. It's not just like, oh, you trigger your other things. You're triggering your other things and you're getting some value. So, yeah, again, I'm not trying to talk this up too much. And a lot of these are, we've seen a lot of like gold, uh, blue, green, gold cards. But this is probably like a C minus or a C in that deck. That's it. Oh, that's it. I thought I'm higher on this card than you. Oh, okay. What do you want to give it? I want to give this like a C plus. I think this card's good. Okay, yeah, no, I'm I'm willing to come up on it. Sure. I like even in non blue green decks, I like this thing. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I'll I'll like I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to come up on it. I, I have no qualms against that. Like scry like, scry, like scry two on on an expensive creature is as I said, it's like close to it's not that far off of draw a card. Definitely, yeah. And there's like benefits for scrying, and then like no, the no, body. No, you're right. You're totally right. Card. Yeah, let's go see a plus on this one. Okay. Sweet. Uh, next up is Enraged Huron. This is five mana, four and a green for a four five trample. And when it ETBs, the ring tempts you. I think it's a, a Huorn, Huorn, although I'm not sure. Huorn, my bad. Huorn. Yeah. Look, we're five hours in. <laughs> I guess yeah, I was making are. mistakes uh, 30 minutes in, but you know. <laughs> um. Yeah, similar with these ETB ring temps I've liked. Costing five knocks it down a bit of a peg for me. I mm. think I'm going to put this as eh, 4 5 trample for 5 is I don't know, a, a C? I was going to go C minus. Basically like uh, the baseline of we all we liked all the things that ETB and tempted, but this one being a little more expensive, I would just knock it down a peg. Just give it a C. I'm sorry, C minus. Yeah. That's fair. Uh what's next? next? We have generous ent 5 and a green for a creature tree folk. It is a 5 7 with reach. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token and four cycling one. This is the best one, I think, of the cycle? Yeah, I like this one a lot. Yeah, it's it's large. It stabilizes you, creates that rectangle. I think this... So the, the highest grade we gave was C for these. Yeah, and this one's a C+. Plus, yeah, right? I think this is a C+. Plus. It's, it just doesn't. Yeah. Cool. All right. And now, home stretch. This is the Uncommons. First one here, it's a really funny one. Uh, long list of the ends. So this is a saga. Single green mana, and it's all it's got six chapters, but they're all the same. It says, note a creature type that hasn't been noted for long list of the ends. When you cast your next creature spell of that type this turn, 
That creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So a little bit difficult to parse, but basically you have to name a creature type that you haven't named with this card before and you'll get a counter on it uh, when that thing enters. This is the this is a card that's going to really punish me for not playing with an overlay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I just like looking at your creature types. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always play with it. No, I, I just play like the old boomer paper days where you just got to remember everything. So and, it's just, uh, this is a weird card. It's yeah. So how many counters do you need to get off of it for it to be good? Like two or three. three? Yeah, I'd say I'd say closer to three. But, like, but it's also like a horrible top deck. Yes, very, very bad top deck. Pretty good in your opener, though. Like, if you just, you have yeah. to have a spread of creatures. But here's the thing like, most creatures have two creature types. So it's not that common that you're going to have two things that overlap with both their creatures. I I really don't like the card, though. I, I think that in you, your opponents are going to play this sometimes on turn one, and they're going to get like a few counters. I just think it's so, so bad later in the game, though. Yeah, and it's it's like it's pretty hard to get three counters off of yes. this. Because sometimes you're like not so, even gonna cast three creatures. Like sometimes you have to cast a removal spell. I guess no, it's that's not true. It's you're gonna it's gonna stick around for long enough that you're gonna it's gonna bear itself out. You're gonna if you have the cards, you're gonna be able to cast them. I want to give it like a, a D. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm gonna go D for long list events here. Okay. Next up, we've got Mariodoc Brandybuck. What a name! This is one in a green for a two two legendary creature, halfling citizen. When one or more halflings you control attacks, create a food token. Yeah, just a solid card, I think. Yeah, just good. 2-2 two, two when it attacks. Like, again, it's got that kind of hasty ability sometimes where you, this thing doesn't have to attack. Like, if you can make two foods off of it where something else attacks and then this attacks at some point. Yeah, we want to give us a C plus, B minus? C plus? Yeah, C plus. Yeah, C plus for Mariodoc. All right, what's next? Next, we have Shortcut to Mushrooms. One in a green for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. I don't think this one's very good. Nah, yeah, I don't like this one. Yeah, this is just like another D. Yeah, I give this another D minus even. I <laughs> I don't I don't think this is a card you should put in your deck. Well, I mean, like it triggers off of food, like uh, even food just sacrifice. Food, food is true. Every time you sacrifice yeah. food, you. It's the end step though, like. It makes things block I know. a little better. Yeah, I, it, doesn't, it, does, it doesn't have any power or toughness. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna give this a D minus. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like one of the worst cards in the set, to be honest. Well, you know, aside from the, uh, the playable looking cards, anyways. Um, yeah, you're probably right. What's it next? Next is Entish Restoration. Two and a green for an instant. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. If you control a creature with power four or greater, instead search for three lands. Okay, so it's a harrow effect that doesn't come make them come uh, untapped, which is a big part of why harrow is a solid ramp spell. Yeah, Har I mean harrow used to be good, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, I I like I guess it's fine if you like really need the fixing slash you're somewhat of a ramping deck, but like it, even then it's not the best rate. I think this is probably a D. Yeah, because like. Normally, you play your ramp spells to get your four power creatures, yes. not like <laughs> your four power creatures right. to get your ramp. Spells. Yeah, yeah, that reads as a commander line of text to me. So, yeah, yep, D for edge restoration. Next up, we've got Glorfindel, Dauntless Rescuer, two and a green for a three two elf noble legendary creature. Whenever you scry, you choose one, uh, and Glorfindel Rescuer gets plus one plus one until end turn. So, that's kind of cool. You always get the plus one plus one, and you can choose either it must be blocked this turn or it can't be blocked by more than one creature this combat. Yeah, weird, weird card. Yeah. Hmm. So, you have to scry pre combat, and then you can either force something to block. Neither of these abilities is actually like, particularly it's not good. Great, right? Like, what, what is this? Like a like a D plus? <laughs> You're mostly looking to like attack for four sometimes, and then once in a while, you'll like end up in a situation where the must be block is pretty good. Or, or you know, the other one too. The other one might come up too. They might just have like if they if you made this a four three and they just don't have any three powered creatures, it can't be blocked profitably. So that's not that bad. So you want to go higher than D plus? No, then? no, no, no. I, I, like a little bit. I was gonna give it a C minus. But C minus. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's next? 
Next we have Peregrine Took, two and a green for a 2-3 legendary halfling citizen. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus an additional food are created instead, and you can sack three food to draw a card. Huh, okay. So y you make two food for every food you make, then you, you know, one one token. It's not going to be that often that you, you cash in your food. Like, sometimes you're not even going to want to cash in your three foods to draw a card, because, like, you're using the foods right. for other things, or you want the life. So I think mostly you're looking at this as the brunt side, or the, the, the first line, and three minute two three is not very good. Oh, it's not, like, that understated, no, though. I think this is, like, a C. Like a build-around C+. Build around, build around C+. Yeah, that's probably a little more accurate. All right, uh, next up, Stew the Conies. Two and a green for an instant. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control, and you make a food token. Yeah, and it's an instant. Yeah, it's an instant. Yeah, instant speed bite, make a food token. Cool, yeah, that's a C+. Yeah, I like this. Cool. Celeborn the Wise. This is, a, I mean, it's an elf. It's a legendary creature. I haven't looked at the text. I imagine it's a scry matters thing, though. This is three to green for a three, three elf noble. Sure is, legendary creature. Whenever you attack with one or more elves, you scry one. Whenever you scry, Celeborn the Wise gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each card you looked at this way. Huh, interesting. So attacks is a four, four. Minimum. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. And it's not you can't do this in combat. It's not like uh oh sorry you can you can like uh, you know you can use it as a trick. You can you can go cast my instant or whatever that scries. It's not an attack. Yeah. yeah, having more than one elf doesn't matter, but having separate instants of scry yes. matters. There's a lot of cards in this. It's just like so many cards that are like this is a little bit small when you want to block, but a pretty okay when you want to attack. <laughs> like there's so many cards that are just like that. Huh. Yeah, so many. Three, four mana, three threes that are like, you're we're we're doing something fancy here. I don't think this one's as good though. Like I think this one's like this one's probably worse than that common four four that we saw, that uh, attacks yeah, and becomes a five five a lot of the time. I think this is like a C minus. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair grade. All right, what's next? Next we have Dune Dane Rangers, three and a green for a four four. Uh, for a human ranger and landfall whenever you, an en land enters the battlefield under your control if you don't control a ring bearer the ring tempts you hmm. okay um so you're like incentivized to keep trading off your ring bearer this with this one oh well, it's not that easy but, well but once you do it the first time, the next time you do it, your thing gets like, you know, like you're going to be getting death touch pretty quickly with this, right? Yeah, this is another, uh, you know, I mentioned there weren't that many, but this is another one that tempts you. It can tempt multiple times from one card. But the weird thing is, like, if you're, if you have a ring bear on level two, you're pitching your lands. Mm, yeah. So you don't, like, you're not going to have yeah. as many landfall. Yeah, landfall right? does not play that well with the ring bear. That's actually kind of funny. Yeah. I think this is probably just I, I I'll say C. I think just a straight up C. It's four mana four four. <laughs> it, it it blocks the the three threes or whatever or attacks into the three threes. Yeah, I think just a C is fine. I'll I'll, I'll give an optimistic C plus. I just I, I like four mana four fours just seem so big in a land of four mana three threes. Yeah, that's fair. Next up, Gift of Strands. This is three and a green for a flash aura. When it enters the battlefield, you scry two, and enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three. Ooh. Yeah, having flash on this thing, this thing this it, makes a creature real big. You were talking about Briarhorn, and it's not, like, completely out of the zip code of Briarhorn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this one. Yeah, I, I think that this card is going to beat me a lot of the time. Yeah, like, you, it's it's a... You're fine spending your turn using this as a trick. Like any time you have an aura that sticks around that's like reasonably large, this it it's a little bit better than it looks. You get some value on it too, huh? Yeah, I, I actually think this card's pretty solid. Like it, you're gonna be able to see it coming some amount of the time, yes, but definitely. there's a lot of time you won't be able to do much about it. I think I want to give. I want to say like C. Yeah, I was gonna give it a C. <laughs> like we were both like, I'm gonna give it. We paused like for the other one. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I was gonna give it a C. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. And our last card here till tomorrow is Quick Beam Upstart Ent. Six mana for GG for a 
Five six legendary creature tree folk. When quick beam upstart ent or another tree folk enters the battlefield under your control, up to two target creatures each get plus two plus two and gain trample until on a turn. Whew. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of extra damage. Oh yeah, that's like it's almost as if it has haste, to be honest. Like it's a little bit less than that, but wow, we um there have not been that many tree folk. You know, of all the creature types that we've kind of cared about. But who cares? <laughs> like this, the uh, this the six that uh this comes in pushes a few things through. That's that's a good six mana card. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a lot of potential damage there. Yeah, I kind of want to give this like a, uh, give like B a B. Okay, yeah, I, I'm B gonna go B minus, but in that I think range. It sounds good. All right, and Mark, we're gonna cl- shut her down here. We've got uh, tomorrow for the rares and mythics. Five hours was uh, just a little bit under five hours for today. So, any last thoughts for the commons and commons? You know, going in, I think a lot of people had the thought this was a little bit of a powered down set, and I do think that that is true. Um, but do you think it's going to be majorly different than uh, some of the standard sets we've had lately? Or what's your what's your take on after seeing the commons and commons? I think this set's going to be interesting for the first like month or so. I, I don't know if it'll have like as much longevity just because there's. Like less words typically means less interesting interactions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the colors look reasonably balanced. If I had to like pick a, a color order, I would say maybe green and blue are a little on the weaker side, and may, maybe white. I kind of like what red and black are both doing. Me too. Um, but I do think that there's going to be some interesting gameplay for for a core set for this. So look, looking forward to giving it a try. Yeah, I think that uh, just the ring being basically the headliner mechanic that's a mechanic that does have a lot of words a lot of complexity a lot of thinking a lot of plan i think it has one of mom's features was a lot of planning ahead and i think the ring's gonna make you plan ahead a decent amount think about what your combats are gonna look like so yeah i am i'm certainly you know just you know i was going into this set before i saw the commons and uncommons when they were just coming through with the rares and the mythics and a few commons and commons and uncommons here and there i was like I don't know. The set might uh, be super simple. Some of the commons they uh, revealed earlier were like really toned down and powered down. But after we saw the full dump, I was like, okay, it's actually not that much different, I think, than than most sets. Maybe slightly less powerful, but I'm optimistic as well. All right. Well, once again, chat um, and everybody listening, the rares and mythics will be up a little bit after this one. Uh, If you're watching on Twitch, you can join us once again, five o'clock Eastern tomorrow on the Twitch channel. We won't have technical difficulties this time. I promise we'll uh, we'll start a lot closer to five o'clock. And thank you all for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. If I, if I could add one last thing. Oh, of course. Go ahead. I, I, I should have mentioned this. I, I was thinking about it, and then I forgot. So maybe, maybe you can edit this or include it. But one thing that really sets apart um, simple formats is, like, how are you giving players decisions to make? Yep. And the fact that two of the themes in this set, one of them is Scry, and the other one is basically looting with, with the ring and choosing a ring bearer. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that gives players enough decisions to make in the mid to late games where, like, sets with, with blood or scrying or whatever have been typically better. Yeah. Because you get more decisions and more ways to turn draws late game into something a little bit more poignant. And I think the set is going to do a pretty good job of making sure players have stuff to spend their mana on every turn. Yep. Uh, I fully agree. All right. Peace out, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye, Mark. Thanks. Have a good night. Thanks.